Hey guys, what's up? I welcome you to the introduction tutorial on Pygame. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about game development in Python and how Pygame, that is a module in Python, is used for game development in Python. Now, Python is the most popular programming language or nothing wrong to say that it is the next generation programming language. In every emerging field in computer science, Python makes its presence actively. Now Python has a vast set of libraries for various fields such as the machine learning in which we have libraries like NumPy, Pandas and Matplot library. Then we have the artificial intelligence platform in which we have libraries like PyTorch, we have got TensorFlow and then we have got the game development platform in Python that has two main libraries that are the Pygame and Piglet. So these are the two game development modules we have in Python. The first one is Piglet as you can see right on your screens and the second one is Pygame which is basically the concern for this section. Now our topic of concern here is game development and in the game development we have got Pygame as our main concern. Now game development is very rewarding nowadays and it can be used in advertising and as a teaching tool as well. Game development includes mathematics, it includes logics, it includes physics, it includes the artificial intelligence concept and how much more and it can be amazingly fun. Of course fun when you are talking about creating games. Now as I told you that we have got two modules that are used in Python for game development, we are going to be working with the Pygame module. So basically Pygame is a cross-platform set of Python modules which is used to create video games. It consists of computer graphics and sound libraries that are designed to be used with the Python programming language. It was officially written by the P-Chainers to replace the PySTL. Pygame is suitable to create client-side applications that can be potentially wrapped in a standalone executable. So basically Pygame is a Python wrapper for the SDL library which stands for the Simple Direct Media Layer. Now SDL basically provides cross-platform access to our system underlying multimedia hardware component that include the sound, video, mouse, keyboard and joystick type of things. Now Pygame started life as a replacement for the stalled PySDL project. The cross-platform nature of both SDL and Pygame means you can write games and rich multimedia Python programs for every platform that supports them. Now by using the Pygame module you can control the logic and graphics of your games without worrying about the backend complexities that are required for working with video and audio. So in this whole section here we are going to talk about the Pygame module. We'll start on with the very basics of this module and we'll gradually move towards the advanced part and at the end hopefully you will be making a game using Pygame that will help you understand this module and I'm going to also teach you some games that are going to sharpen your concepts on Pygame. So for this tutorial I guess that is it that was the introduction tutorial to this module. In the next tutorial we are going to start on with the technical stuff. So thank you so much guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Hey guys what's up I welcome you to another tutorial on this section where we are covering the Pygame module in Python. In the previous tutorial we have covered the introduction part of this section in which we talked about the Pygame module in Python. In that we also discussed that there is one more module in Python as well that is used for game programming that is the Piglet. In this tutorial we are going to cover the comparison between these two modules so it is going to be Pygame versus Piglet. Now Pygame is richly active whereas Piglet has a neat new year API and is very convenient. If you talk about the speed then speed wise Piglet is definitely faster than Pygame out of the box and speed is always a concern when developing games with Pygame. Now there is no such kind of issue with Piglet. In terms of Py3 support I believe the issue is simply that Pygame that is much more mature and popular has a vastly larger core development group so of course it can get new things like Py3 support out of the gate earlier. If none of the above issue is decisive for you, then the only sensible approach is really to download both and try the same elementary task of your interest on machines of your interest that will tell you how well each fits your brain, your need for speed, convenience and so forth. The main difference is the graphics or sprites repositioning. In Pygame coordinates take integer values only. If you need to use another size of the game window, it results in different animation speed 
as you cannot move object of less than 1 pixel. There are numerous other differences, for example, constructing and steering the game loop that is easier in Piglet as to my taste. My overall impression is that Pygame is suitable for educational purposes. Piglet seems more difficult at the first sight, but it is more, more flexible. It also has less dependencies. A disadvantage is that you need the Fbin library to play compress sounds. Now if you talk about the 3D support then since Piglet is so firmly merged with OpenGL, it allows the support of drawing in 3D. If you talk about the easy Python syntax, then Pygame uses Python as its scripting language. Python is widely treated one of the most natural languages to grasp even for beginners. Then if you talk about the cross-platform support then Piglet can work with Window, it can work with Linux and it can work with the OS operating system as well. Whereas if you talk about the usage API, then the API for Pygame is very straightforward. Then if you talk about the writing language, then Piglet is written in pure Python. It can be compiled using the other Python interpreters. And if you talk about the best canvas system, then Pygame provides a drawing system that allows the users to create and draw an unlimited number of the canvas. Then if you talk about the popularity, then Piglet is less popular because it has smaller community support whereas Pygame is more popular than the Piglet because it has a large number of community support. So I hope that you have got the differences between these two modules. And as I told you before, if you are not sure which one to use, like for example, you don't know if speed is your concern or let's say the Pi3 support is your concern, then what you can do is that you can go on and try both the uh, machines on your elementary task and see which one fits your brain. So I will go on and exit this tutorial for me and I will leave it to you guys to decide which one is better for you. So for this tutorial that is it. Thank you so much guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Hey guys what's up I welcome you to another tutorial on this section where we are covering the Pygame module in Python. And in this tutorial we are going to see how we are going to import the Pygame module in Python. Now there are multiple ways of how you can install Pygame into the project. The first one is that you can go into the interpreter setting and install the Pygame module there. Then the second one is that you can go on in the terminal and you can just install Pygame from there using the pip command. And then the third way is that you can just go on directly by clicking on the text where you have written import Pygame. So let's just see all of these three ways on the compiler. So here we are, we have already created our project name gaming and in that we have created our Python file that is known as game.py. So here we are going to write in import and we are going to write in pygame. Now since I have already got this installed on my system, but if you don't have this installed on your system, a red line is going to be shown right beneath this pygame and it is going to show a red bulb right over here. You can just click on the arrow that is just beside the red bulb and it is going to just uh, give you an option of uh, install package or something like that. You, could you can just go on and click on that and it is going to do your job. The second way is that you can just go into the terminal from here and it is going to automatically open the project in which you are working. It is my name, then it is PyCharm project and this is the project we are working in that is gaming. Here you can just go on and write in pip install pygame and when you click enter it is going to install pygame on your system. I'm not going to do it because I have already done it. The third way is that you can just go on into file over here. You can just go on to settings and then you are going to go into the interpreter settings. It is going to be somewhere over here. This project then the project interpreter and these are the packages you have got you have got pip you have got pygame and you have got setup tools now if you are facing any kind of problem installing pygame then this is going to be the answer for you it uh, is going to require setup tools to use pygame so if you're having any kind of issues installing pygame then i suggest you go and install setup tools so you're going to just click on this plus sign you're going to write in pygame right over here this is Pygame right over here and you're just going to click on this and you're going to click on install package. You can just go on and select the version from here as well if you want to. 
but that is not necessary because you want to install it to the latest version so I don't need to do it from here so these are the three ways basically how you can install or you can say import Pygame into your system and it is very important because this is what we are going to be doing in the next section and this is exactly what we are going to require so I guess you will install this and if you are facing any kind of issue installing this you can just go on and contact me and I'm going to surely help you out. So for this tutorial that is it. Thank you so much guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Hey guys what's up I welcome you to another tutorial on this section where we are covering the Pygame module in Python and in this tutorial we are going to code a very basic program in which we are going to try and understand some very basic concepts of the Pygame module. If I tell you this is going to be the foundation of this entire course if you don't understand this tutorial then I assure you that you're not going to understand anything so this is a very simple tutorial but it is a very very important tutorial for you to understand to continue on with this section so here we are going to create a program that is going to create a very simple window in Pygame it is going to fill the background with a color and then we are going to draw a circle in the middle of that screen so what we are going to do here is that we have already imported the Pygame module and I hope that you have also successfully installed this on your systems either by any of the three ways I taught you in the previous tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to code the other basic steps that are required to go on with your coding in Pygame. Now after you have successfully imported the Pygame module in Python, the next thing you are going to do is that you are going to initialize the Pygame module. Now the Pygame library is basically composed of a number of Python constructs which include several different modules. Now these modules basically provide abstract access to specific hardware on your systems as well as uniform methods to work with that hardware. For example, the display allows uniform access to your video display while joyst joystick allows abstract control of your joystick. Now after importing the Pygame library in the example we have coded in the previous tutorial, the first thing you are going to do here is that you are going to initialize Pygame using pygame.init. So right here we are going to write in pygame.init and that this function calls basically separates the init functions of all the included Pygame modules since these modules are abstractions for specific hardwares so this initialization step is required so that you can work with the same code on Linux, Windows and Mac operating system. So if I repeat here after importing the Pygame module what you are going to do is that you are going to initialize the Pygame module or in other words you can just say that you are having the abstractions you are initializing the abstractions of other modules that are part of the Pygame module to be very simple. Now the next thing we are going to do here is that we are going to set up the drawing window where we are going to draw our circle. So we are going to create an object named as window and we are going to write in Pygame dot display dot set mode and here we are going to specify the specifications for the window so let's say it is going to be a 600 cross 600 window so it is going to be 600 600 so this is going to be the window where we are going to draw our circle in simple world it sets up your program display window you provide either a list or a tuple that specify the width and height of the window to create this program uses a list to create a squared window of 600 pixels on each side. After you have initialized your or set up your drawing window, what you are going to do is that you are going to run the code until the user has asked you to exit. So you are going to create a variable named as playing and you are going to make it equal to true. Now by this it actually means that you want your code to keep running or in other words you can say that you have set up a game loop to control when the program is going to end. You will cover game loops later in this section as well. So for now you need to only understand that this is basically a loop and your code or you can say your game is going to keep running 
until and unless this variable named as playing is true which we have initialized to true for now but as soon as it becomes false the game is going to exit so we have written playing equal to true so right here we are going to write in while playing which means that while this is true what we want is that we want the user to click the close button so until and unless the user click the close button the playing equal to true is going to remain true so we are going to write in for event in pygame dot event dot get what we want is that if event dot type equal equal to pygame dot quit then we are going to write in playing equal to false in other words this statement over here means that whenever it receives an event where you click on the cross button which means pygame.quit that is the window that is going to appear that is the 600 cross 600 is going to have the sign of a cross at the right top corner so whenever you click on it this condition is going to become true playing is equal to is going to equal to false and the playing is going to be false now and it is going to just close your game in other words you can say that basically it scan and handle events within the game loop you will get two events a bit later as well in this case the only event handled is the pygame.quit which occurs when the user clicks the window close button after that what we are going to do is that we are going to specify a color for the window we have created right here that is the 600 cross 600 window so here we are going to use the fill function so we are going to write in window dot fill and you can use any color you want so i'm going to use the white color so it is going to be 255 255 255 and you know that this is the rgb ratio which we are using over here so you know that if you don't know you can just go on and google it 255 255 255 means that the r value is at the maximum the green value is at the maximum and the red value is at i don't know the sequence for this but the 255 255 and 255 means that we are we are we just want the white color to be displayed so our window is going to be filled with white color right over here so these are the basically rgb ratios which means that this is red this is green and this is i guess blue so it doesn't matter it is going to display a white color in simple words after that as i told you that we are going to create a window and we are going to draw a circle into it so we are going to write in pygame dot draw dot circle this circle is going to get added to the window which we have created and we are going to write in the dimensions from where it is going to start and the dimension where it is going to end and we are going to specify the thickness for that as well so here what we are going to do is that we are going to first write in window as you can see that we have written window that is the window on which we want to draw the circle after that we are going to define a tuple containing the rgb color values so we are going to draw a blue circle so it is going to be 0, 0, 255 as you can see that we have specified the red 0 green 0 and blue to be the maximum which means that blue color is going to pop up so the circle which is going to be drawn is going to be of blue color after that we are going to specify the center coordinates of the circle so if you want to draw the circle in the very uh, center of this window so the window is 600 comma 600 so this one is going to be 300 comma 300 which means that the x value is going to be 300 the y value is going to be 300 which means that the circle is the circle center point is going to be exactly at the center of the window which we have created and after that the final argument is going to be the radius of the circle so let's say that the radius of the circle is going to be 80 so the last thing we are going to do is that we are going to write in pygame dot display dot flip and what it is going to do is that it is going to flip the display for us which means that it is going to update the contents of the display to the window without this call nothing is going to appear in the window so this statement that is display dot flip is very important and the final thing we are going to do is that we are going to exit pygame this only happens when once the loop is finished 
that's the Pygame version. So let's just write in over here at the very end Pygame dot quit. So it is going to quit Pygame for us. And one mistake I think we have done here is that these three lines need to be a part of the gaming loop and we have just made them outside. Just click tap and correct their identification because all of this has to be part of the game loop and this is basically the gaming loop in which we are operating. So these three lines, the windows dot fill, the drawing of circle and the flip of the display that is going to display everything on our screen is going to be a part of this gaming loop. After that, outside the gaming loop, we are going to write in pygame.quit. So let's just run this code now and see if it works. All right, as you can see that it has worked perfectly. You have got a 600 by 600 window. This point somewhere here is going to be the 300, uh, 300 point. And then this is the circle of 80 diameter. You can just go on and change the diameter to let's say 180. And now run this code and it is going to be a bigger circle as you can see. So let's just revise all these concepts we have covered in this uh, program. So first we have imported Pygame. After that we have initialized Pygame and I have already told you what is initialization here. After that we have created a window of 600 cross 600 coordinates. Then we have got the playing equal to true. After that we have created the gaming loop in which until and unless the user click on the cross button, it is going to remain true. After user click on the cross button, it is going to become false. In here we have just specified the background color for the window. We have drawn a circle that is added or you can say drawn in the window. Blue is its color, 300 comma 300 is the x y values of the center of the circle and this is the radius of the circle. And finally we have got a statement to display everything on the screen that is pygame.display.flip and at the end we have got pygame.quit. So this program basically encapsulates a lot of the basic concept or you can say the foundation of pygame module. Now if you talk about some of the Pygame concepts, as Python and the SDL library are portable across different platforms and devices, they both need to define and work with abstractions for various hardware realities. Understanding those concepts and abstractions will help you design and develop your own games. So I've already talked about initialization and modules. Then comes the display and surfaces. Now, in addition to the modules, Pygame also includes several Python classes which encapsulates non-hardware dependent concepts. One of these concepts is the surface which at its most basic defines a rectangular area on which you can draw. Here we have got that rectangular area right here. So basically the surface objects are used in many contexts in Pygame. Later on in this section you are going to see how to load an image onto a surface and display it onto the window as well. In Pygame everything is viewed on a single user created display which can be a window or a full window. The display is created using the set mode which we have done right over here as well which can be a window or a full window. Now this set mode basically return a surface representing the visible part of the window. It is this surface that you pass into drawing functions like pygame.drawCircle which we have used over here and the contents of that surface are pushed to the display when you call pygame.display.flip. Then we have got the concept of images and rectangles. Now your basic Pygame program drew a shape directly onto the display surface but you can also work with images on the disk. The image module allows you to load and save images in a variety of popular formats. Images are loaded into surface objects which can then be manipulated and displayed in numerous ways. As mentioned above, surface objects are re represented by rectangles as are many other objects in Pygame such as images and windows. Rectangles are so heavily used that there is a special rect class just to handle them. You will be using rect objects and images in your game to draw players and enemies and to manage collisions between them. So all that is going to be a part of the future tutorials. You have covered the displays here. You have created your first display using the set mode with where you have got your visible part using the set mode function. Then you have also used the concept of the initializations and modules where you have used pygame.init and it is going to be used in every program you code in pygame because if you don't initialize the abstractions for things, it is not going to work. So I hope that you have understood the basic 
concepts and this is what is exactly the name of this tutorial as well that is the understanding of the very basic concepts or you can say that this tutorial is basically the foundation of what we are going to learn in the future tutorials so i hope that you have understood this well so for this tutorial that is it thank you so much guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial hey guys what's up i welcome you to another tutorial on this section where we are covering the pi game module in python and in this tutorial we are going to talk about pi game clock and pi game plate so let's just start on with the first one that is pi game clock now as you know that times are represented in millisecond that is 1000 part 1000 seconds in pi game now pi game clock is used to track the time the time is essential to create motion play a sound or react to any event in general we don't count time in seconds we count it in milliseconds the clock also provide various functions to help in controlling the game's frame rate some of the functions that include the pi game clock are the tick where you have got this function to update the clock the syntax is right in front of you you have got tick then you have got frame rate equal to zero now this method should be called once per frame it will calculate how many milliseconds have passed since the previous call the frame rate argument is optional to pass in the function and if it is passed as an argument then the function will delay to keep the game running slower than the given takes per second the second function is the take busy loop the take busy loop is very same as the tick by calling the clock dot take busy loop and just specifying let's say 20 millisecond as the parameter once per frame the program will never run at more than 20 frames per second the syntax is written right in front of you then we have got the get time function that is used to get the previous tick the numbers of a milliseconds that is a draw passed between the last two calls in clock.tick is obtained using this get time function so the next concept we are going to cover is the pi game blade the pi game blade is the process to render the game objects onto the surface and this process is called blitting when we create the game object we need to render it if we don't render the game objects and run the program then it will give the black windows an output blitting is one of the slowest operation in any game so we need to be careful to not to blit much onto the screen in every frame the primary function used in blitting is blit which is listed right in front of you it accepts several parameters the first one is the source then the destination then the area and then we have got special flag so basically this function is used to draw one image onto another the draw can be placed with the destination argument the destination argument can either be a pair of coordinates representing the upper left corner of the source so this is basically the concepts of clock and blit in pi game now if you are thinking that what is the con why is pi game and blit very important so i've already told you that the concept of blitting is very important because when you create the game object you need to render if you don't render it it is going to just display a black window and then if you talk about why pi game clock is required even you have you might have played games where uh, you might have let's say for example you are playing chess so every opponent gets a specific amount of time to just have his move done so all that is managed using pi game clock concept in that you have got the functions that take the tick busy loop and the get time functions that are going to be used in the future tutorials when we are going to create the games so i hope that you have understood these two concepts that are going to be a part of the future tutorials so for this tutorial that is it thank you so much guys for watching and i will see you guys in the next tutorial hey guys what's up i welcome you to another tutorial on this section where we are covering the pi game module in python and in this tutorial we are going to see how you are going to load an image onto a surface so as i told you basically that pi game is a cross-platform set of python modules designed for writing video games it includes computer graphics and sound libraries that are designed to be used with the python programming language now it's up to the imagination or a necessity of the developer that what type of game he or she wants to develop using this toolkit so there are four basic steps that are going to be used to display images on the pi game window 
The first one is that you have to create a display surface object using the display.setMode method of Pygame. After that, the second step says that you have to create an image surface object that is the surface object in which image is drawn on it using the image.load method of Pygame. The third step is to copy the image surface object to the display surface object using the blit method of Pygame display surface object. And the fourth step finally is to show the display surface object on the Pygame window using display.update method of Pygame. So let's just go on and see how all of these steps are going to be completed. So this is basically the code from the previous tutorial in which we have the Pygame imported, we have the initialization part and what we have also is that we have completed one step over here that is to create a display surface object using display.setMod. Now step number two says that you have to create an image surface object that is the surface object in which image is drawn on it using the image.load method of Pygame. So what image we are going to use, if you just go on into the project, you can see that I have already downloaded a picture and copied it into the working directory of this gaming project as picture.jpg. This is the picture, this is the gaming directory in which I've got this picture right over here and I want to load this picture right onto my set mode window. So I will move on to my compiler again. Just minimize this from here and just go on and complete step number two. So as I have told that step number two says to use the image.load function. So that is exactly what we are going to do right over here. So to use image.load function, we are going to specify the location for that as well. So it is going to be image equal to pygame.image.load. And after that, we are going to specify the directory in which our image is located. So we are going to go right here. We are going to copy this destination right from here. We are going to go back to this here, specify picture.jpg. And this is exactly the picture I have right here. You can see that I've got picture.jpg here. So this is exactly the picture I am going to use. After that, the third step says that I have to copy the image surface object to the display surface object using blit method of Pygame display surface object. So right here, I'm going to use the concept of blit. Now in the previous tutorial, I told you about the Pygame clock and the Pygame blit. And in the Pygame blit, I told you that when you want to render something, you have to use the concept of blit. If you don't use it, you are going to see a black surface. So right after this window.fill, I'm going to use the concept of the blit. So I'm going to write in window.blit. I'm going to write in the name of the image I want to render and I'm going to specify the position where I want to render this image. So image is what I'm going to render, which is this object right over here that is going to load picture.jpg for me and store it in this object. And blit is going to render this image at zero cross comma zero coordinates. Now, what does this mean? That this means that whatever window we have created, that is this 40, 450 comma 450 window at the zero comma zero index that is the value of x and y it is going to start rendering the image and it is going to keep rendering it until the image is completed or you can say that if the window has ended so this is going to be the third step now the fourth step basically says that you have to show the display surface object on the pygame window using the display dot update method of pygame so right down here, we are going to specify pygame.display.update and that is going to do our job. So let's just run this code and then I'm going to revise what we have done in this tutorial. So let's just run this code and as you can see that we have got a perfect image that is our image and it has been rendered according to our specification using the blit method. So let's just revise what we have done so far. So the first step here was to actually uh, just get your window. That was basically the uh, Pygame window so that we have obtained using the set mode function as you can see right here. Then in the line number five, we have used the image load function. And that is exactly what we have to do is that we have to create an image surface object in which the image is drawn on it using the image.load method of Pygame. After that, what we have to do is that we have to use the blit method right here that is used to render the image at the specified location we want that is zero zero. 
and image is exactly what is going to get rendered which we have specified the location here and the final step was basically to show the display surface object on the pi game window now in the previous tutorial when we were drawing the circle we used the flip method right here when you want to load an image you have to use the display dot update function and that is going to display an image right onto your screen so this is exactly what we have learned in this tutorial how to load an image onto the surface of pygame window so for this tutorial i guess that is it thank you so much guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial hey guys what's up i welcome you to another tutorial on this section in which we are covering the pygame module in python in this tutorial we are going to see that how we can display text to a pygame window now the font objects are created with pygame.font.font .font. the actual font objects do most of the works done with fonts font objects are generally used to render the text into the new surface objects now few important font functions which are a part of this concept includes the render function the syntax of it is given right on your screen basically this function is used to draw text on a new surface pygame has no facility to draw text on the existing surface this creates a new surface with a specified text render on it as you can see in the syntax the first argument is the text then we have to specify the anti alias then we have to specify color and then you can specify the background that is optional if you don't want to specify it just don't do it the second function with the text concept is the size this function is used to determine the number of space or positioning needed to render a text it can also be used for word wrapping and other layout effects and the syntax for that is given right in front of you and the third and last function is the set bold function this function is basically used for bold rendering of text and the syntax is given right in front of you now before we go on to the example part i just want to explain the seven basic steps that are going to be a part of this tutorial that will help us display text on the pi game window now step number one says that you have to create a display surface object as usual using the display dot set mode method of pi game after you have done that which we have already done the second step is to create a font object using font dot font method of pi game and as i told you before that basically the font objects are created with pi game dot font dot font so the second step is going to help us to create font objects where we are going to create a font object using font dot font method of pi game in the third step we are going to create a text surface object that is the surface object in which text is drawn on it using render method of pygame font object which we have already covered what is the render method in the fourth step we are going to create a rectangular object for the text surface object using get rectangle method of pygame text surface object after that in the next step we are going to set the position of the rectangular object by setting the value of the center property of pygame rectangular object in the sixth step we are going to copy the text surface object to the display surface object using blit method of pygame display surface object and you already know what is the purpose and usage of blit method and in the last step we are going to show the display surface object on the pygame window using display.update method of pygame which we have already covered in the previous tutorial when we were showing the image on pygame window so let's just get started and move to our compiler so this is the code from our previous to previous tutorial that is the very basic code and in this code we already have got our step number one done in which we have created a display surface object using display.set mode method of pygame so let's just move on directly to step number two as i told you before step number two is to create a text surface object using the uh, sorry we do not have to uh, create the surface object first we have to first create a font object so step number two says that you have to create a font object using font dot font method of pygame so right after this what we are going to do here So right here we are going to write in font equal to pygame.font.font .font. and this is going to help us create our font object and in this we are going to specify two parameters. The first parameter is going to be the font file which is already present in pygame so that is going to be font 
freehands bold dot ttf and this is the file that is present in pygame already you don't have to worry about this and the second parameter is going to be the size of the font so let's just say that my size is going to be 32 so this is step number two in which we have created a pygame font object using the font dot font method of the pygame library in the third step what we are going to do is that we are going to create a text surface object that is the surface object in which text is drawn on it using the render method of the pygame method so right after this what we are going to do is that we are going to write in text equal to font dot render and the first one is going to be the text so let's just say that our text is going to be tutorials after that we are going to specify it the boolean value that is going to be true and after that we are going to specify colors for it so let's just say i want to specify uh, green and blue as the colors so for that i'm going to use the properties for green that is going to be 0 to 55 0 and i'm going to specify the colors for blue as well that are going to be 0 0 and 1 2 8 you can just go on and check on Google they are perfectly right so this is the third step I guess in which what we have done is that we have actually created a, a text surface object that is the surface object in which text is drawn on it now in the next step we are going to create a rectangular object for the text surface object using the get rectangle method of pygame text surface object so right after we have used this render method what we are going to do is that we are going to write in text rectangle this is the object we are creating and we are going to create it using the text we have used right over here and we are going to call the get rectangle method on it all right in the next step we are going to use the center method on this rectangle so it is going to be get underscore rect and yes that solves the problem so the next step is going to be text rectangle equal to text dot not like this it is going to recenter it so we are going to write in text rectangle dot center and we are going to make it equal to the values which we have used right over here so it is going to be 450 by 2 and let's just perform the floor division here and it is going to be 450 by 2 so it is going to center our rectangle and it is also the fifth step in which we have to set the position of the rectangular object by setting the value of the center property of pygame rectangular object now in the next step what we are going to do is that we are going to use the blend method and why we are using this we want to copy the text surface object to the display surface object using the blend method of pygame display surface object right over here so right down here where we use the blend method previously we are going to use it right after this windows.fill so right after this windows.fill we are going to write in window dot blit and we are going to blit the text this time not the image and we are going to use this text rectangle here as well and in the last step what we are going to do is that we are going to display things so for that we already have got the pygame.display.update that is to show the display surface object on the pygame window using display.update method of the pygame so i guess that it is just okay so let's just run this code and see if it works perfectly or not so let's just run this code all right it says hello from pygame community and i guess we've got some problems here all right it says that it is called error in this free all right i guess i have misspelled it it should be free s-a-n-s bold dot ttf and i guess it is going to work now all right it has worked perfectly and as you can see that i've got this window in which i've got this simple text that says tutorials so let me just re-explain the entire code and now with the help of the output you are going to understand it much more better 
So let's just start from here. You already know what is this. This is the first step in which we simply, what we simply do is that we use the display.setMode method of Pygame to create a display surface object. In the next step, what we did here is that we created a font object using the font.font .font method of Pygame. This is going to be the style of the, uh, of the text which we are going to display and this is going to be the size of the text. So the first step, the first argument is basically the style of the text and the second argument basically is the size of the text. Now you don't have to worry about this TTF file. This is the font file which is already present in Pygame as I told you before. So you don't have to worry about its existence. It is not going to generate any error if you just don't misspell it as I did. So the third step here says that you have to use the render method and that was because you have to create a text surface object that was the surface object in which the text is drawn. So you have to render tutorials in the previous tutorial we have to render an image so we use the image uh, the image location over here in place of this text which we have specified over here. So this time we are basically rendering a font that is tutorials. We are going to make it true which means that we want to make it visible. Then we are going to specify two colors. The first one is I guess for the green color and then it is for the blue color. And as you can see over here that the first color is basically green color which is basically the foreground color in which the text is written and the second one is the background color in which the uh, text is basically written which you can see right here this is blue this is the background color and this is the foreground color that is green after that what we have done is that we have actually created a rectangle and as you can see right over here that our text is in kind of a rectangular right over here so what we have done here is that we have created a rectangle over here we have made it to the center and after that in the end when we just blitted our window what we did is that we copied kind of you can say copied our text into the text rectangle which we have created. So right over here you can see that my text is completely in that rectangle I have specified at the location 450 by 2 450 by 2 that is the center of the window. If I just change its position the position of this text right over here is also going to change automatically because I have used the blit method to specify the position of this text and what is going to be the position of this text is going to be inside this text rectangle and, and where this text rectangle is actually is basically this position we have specified right over here that is 450 by 2 450 by 2 that is the center of the Pi game window we have created and at the very end the last step is to display using the display.update method and I hope that you have understood how to display text on a Pygame window. So I guess for this tutorial that is it. Thank you so much guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next tutorial with a new concept related to Pygame. So bye bye till then. Hey guys what's up I welcome you to another tutorial on this section where we are covering the Pygame module in Python and in this tutorial we are going to record the Pygame key down events. So Pygame key down and key up detects the event if a key is physically pressed and released. Key down detects the key press and key up detects that the key has now been released. Both events the key press and key release have two attributes. The first one is the key that is an integer id which represents every key on the keyword. The second one is the mod. Now this is basically a bit mask of all the modifier keys that were in the pressed state when the event occur. So now we are going to code a very very cool example right over here in which what we are going to do is that we are going to detect the key press and key release events and we are going to print the keys right here on our terminal I guess we call it. No we don't call it the terminal we I guess call it the run screen or whatever you call it. We are going to print the output right here. So it is going to be very interesting. So let's just start on. So as you can see that we have imported Pygame. We have initialized the modules and we have created our window. That is the pygame.display.setMode. So this is our window. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to write in while true, which means that this code has to keep running until and unless we click on the cross key so we are going to write in while true what we are going to do is that we are going to get a single event from the event queue so we are going to write in event equal to 
pygame.event.wait. So after that, we, what, we are, what we will do here is that we are going to use the if condition. So we are going to write in if the close button of the window is pressed, we want to stop the application. So we are going to write in if event.type equal equal to pygame.quit. What we want is that we want the application to stop. So we are going to just write in break over here. All right, after this, we, what we will do is that we are going to detect the key down and key up events. So we are going to write in if event dot type in and what we want to detect is basically the key down event and the key up event. So we are going to write in pygame dot key down and the second event is going to be pygame dot key up so these are the two events we want to get so after that what we are going to do is that since we are detecting the key down and key up events we want to also get the key name so here we are going to write in a variable that is going to be named as key name and we are going to write in here pygame dot key dot name and it is going to get us the name of the key that has been pressed and what it is going to be it is going to be the event that has occurred. After that, we are going to convert that into an uppercase letters. So for that, we are going to write in key name dot key name equal to key name dot and we are going to convert it into upper. So we are going to just write in upper over here. So it is going to first detect the key and it is going to then convert it into an uppercase letter. After that, we are going to check if a key ha if any key has been pressed or not. So for that, we are going to write an if event dot type equal equal to pygame dot key down. Then what we are going to do is that we are going to print on the console the key that has been pressed. So for that, we are going to use the print statement and we are going to just write in key pressed and we are going to specify dot the format for that is going to be key name. So in these curly brackets, which we have used over here, it is going to just insert the key name whatever key has been pressed it is going to just get its name and it is going to print it right here after that we are going to check if any key has been released or not so for that what we are going to do is that we are going to use another if statement that is going to be a part of else if even dot type equal equal to pygame dot key up this time then what we are going to do is that we are also going to print that on the console screen. So we will just copy this from here. We are going to paste it right over here. And this time it is going to be released. So whatever key has been released, it is going to print the name of that key. So that's it. Let me just revise it and then we are going to run this code. So the first thing it is going to do is that it is going to check if the cross key has been print or you just exited the window. So what it is going to do is that it is going to break. Then comes the part where you have to detect the events of key down and key up. So if even dot type in pygame dot key down and key up, we are going to specify the key name. So whatever key has been pressed, we want to get its name also. So dot key dot name is going to get us the name of that key. We are going to convert that into uppercase. This is not necessary. If you don't want to do it, just don't do it. So after getting the name of the key, we are converting that into an uppercase. So after that, we are going to check if the event was for the key down or the key up. So if the event for was for key down, we are going to just write in key pressed is whatever key was pressed. And if the event was for key release, then we are going to write in key release was whatever the keys that was released. So let's just run this code and see what is the output for that. So let's just scroll it a bit at the top. And let's just print the enter key over here. 
I guess it is going to generate the output when this is visible. All right, as you can see that when I click the enter key twice, it printed return key press, return key press. Now, if I click on the right shift key, you can see that the right shift key pressed, right shift key release. Now, if I click on the right control key and I just keep holding it, you can see that it only has printed right control key press. Now, when I released it, you can see that it says right control key release. Similarly, when I click on the space button, you can see that I have not yet released it. So that's why it only says that the space key pressed. Now I'm releasing it. So now I have released it and now you can see that it says space key released. Similarly, if I click on the N key, it says N key pressed. Now I'm releasing it. So it say N key released. Similarly goes for Y, I have pressed and released it. So it says Y key pressed, Y key released. Similarly, you can click on any key on your keyboard and it is going to detect that event. Now you must be thinking that what is the purpose of this keyboard key detection in Pygame or game development. Now this is very, very, very crucial and important. Whenever you are playing game, you have to interact with your keyboard over here. So you need to detect those events to move an object on your screen or just play any kind of game. For example, if you are just playing the quad game or let's say just say you are playing IGI or you are playing GTA, then everything is controlled using your keyboard and your mouse. So for now we have seen how to detect the keyboard events whatever key we were clicking whatever key we were releasing it was detecting it using this code we have written right over here now what we are going to do is that that was just for the key detection now we are going to create a rectangle and we are going to control its movement using the keyboard keys so we are going to just remove this code from here and we already have got our window right here you can see now we are going to create a variable here that is going to be done and for initial value its boolean value is going to be false then we are going to create a variable is blue and we are going to set this to true now why i've used this variable you are going to know sooner now we are going to specify the initial values for the rectangle that are going to be x30 and y30 so this is going to be the initial position of the rectangle which we have to move using the arrow keys so this is going to be the position where the rectangular is going to appear when you run your code at the initial start so now we are going to write in while not done which means that we are just reciprocaling it since done is false here so we have used not done which means while true what we want is that for event in pygame.event.get not like this it is going to be here what we want is that if event dot type equal equal to pygame dot quit we are going to make done equal to true now you must be thinking that why I have not used the previous way in which I was just uh, using while true and I just want to teach you the number of ways in which you can program your gaming loop. So that's why I'm using different ways. Now I guess this is the third way in which we are coding our the first one was when we use the playing variable then we used while true and now we are using while not done. So these are multiple ways in which you can code your gaming loop. Now outside this what we are going to do is that we are going to write an if event dot type equal equal to pygame dot key down event which means that if a key down event has been detected and the event dot key which has been pressed equal equal to pygame dot key space then what we are going to do is that we are going to change the is blue variable and this time it is going to equal to not of is blue which means that we are just reciprocaling the boolean value here so if the even dot type equal to pi game dot key down which means that if a key down even has occurred and the key that has been pressed was the key space then what it is going to do is that it is going to make this true value to false which means that is blue is now equal to not of is blue that is false because the initial value was true when you perform the not operation on it it is going to become false 
Now outside this right here, we are going to create a variable named as pressed equal to pygame dot key dot get pressed. And after that, we are going to write in if pressed pygame dot key up which means that when you click on the upper arrow key, what we want is that we want the value of Y to change because when you click on the up key or the down key, the rectangle is going to move along the Y coordinates. Whereas when you click on the right key and the left arrow key, the rectangle is going to move along the X coordinates. So that's why when you click on the up key, we want the value of Y to be equal to y minus equal to 3 which means that the initial value for y is 30 when the rectangle is at let's say this is our 450 by 450 screen and our rectangle is right here that is the 30 30 coordinates when you click on the up key it is going to move up which means that it is going to move towards the zeroth position of the y coordinate that is somewhere over here because this is the complete position where y is going to equal to zero it is going to keep changing when you move downwards right here so when you click on the up key, the value of Y is going to change to three times less than its original value, which means that when you click on the up key once, the value of Y is not going now going to equal to my, uh, minus three, which means that it is going to equal to 27. That is 30 minus three equal to 27. All right, after that, what we are going to do is that we are going to check if pressed by game dot key down then what we are going to do is that we are going to increment the value of y because now the rectangle is going to move downward which means that the value of y is automatically changing because as i told you that the up and down key is going to move your rectangle along the y coordinates so that's why we are using the y or the y coordinates right over here now we are going to uh, do this for the up, uh, sorry, the left and the right key. So for that, we are going to write in pi game dot key left, which means that whenever the left key is going to be pressed, it is going to be square brackets, not curly brackets. So whenever the left key is pressed, the value of X coordinate is going to decrease by a value of three. And similarly, when you click on the right key, Pi game dot key is right then what it is going to do is that it is going to increment the value of x by 3 which means that it is going to move along the x coordinates toward the right side which means the value of x is going to get incremented now what we are going to do is that we are going to write an if is blue then we are going to write in color equal to 0, 1, 28, 2, 5, 5. Else, the color is going to equal to 2, 5, 5, 0. And finally, we are going to write in pi game dot draw rectangle. So finally, we are basically drawing the rectangle that is going to be managed or you can say controlled using these arrow keys. So we are going to write in draw rectangle and it is going to be drawn on the window so we are going to write in window over here i guess we have used window over here yes we have so it is going to be drawn on the window we are going to use the color whatever the color is that is going to be set right over here that if is blue is true which means that we have specified is blue to be true over here and it is only going to become false when the key down is the key space. So it is going to then become false and the color is going to change to this color else it is going to be this color. So it is going to use that color according to the condition that is that if, if you have pressed the key underscore space key or if the even down has occurred for that key or not. So it is going to decide the color according to that. If you have not pressed that, it is going to display this color. If you have, then it is going to display this color. And that is going to be the color of the rectangle you are using. Finally, we are going to write in pygame dot 
rectangle and it is going to be at the x y position that is 30 30 and 60 60 so this means that it is going to start from 30 and it is going to end till third, uh, 60 so this means that it is going to be a rectangle covering the 30 to 60 on the x coordinates and 30 to 60 on the y coordinates as well and finally we are going to write in pi game dot display dot flip all right i guess it's time to now run this code and then i'm going to re-explain what we have coded so far all right as you can see right here that you have got a blue rectangle so if i just move down you can see that it has changed its position now if i just move it towards the right side the upside it can just go anywhere you like it to go i guess the screen is way too small let's just change this size to 850 850 now run this code all right now just click the down key and you can see that it has moved a bit down now press the right key and you can see that it moved right just click the down key and it moves down click the right key and it moves towards the right click the up arrow key and it moves upwards rightwards downwards leftwards downwards rightwards upwards leftward and it can move at any location you want it to move you can see that now i am moving at any side all right so this was a kind of freestyle drawing kind of thing all right so i hope that you have now understood that what is the function or purpose of using the key keyboard detection in pygame keyboard detection is very important to handle object movements as you have seen in this tutorial that we controlled the motion of a rectangle using the keyboard keys that were the arrow keys in our in our case all right so to re-explain what we have let's just let's just implement this is blue concept as well let's just run this again and click on the space key now you can see that the color of the rectangle has changed to red and now it is going to be red and you can simply move it the very same way you did previously let's just close this all right so this thing over here is totally not important that was just to add a bit of a taste to your program we specify done equal to false that was just another way of coding the programming loop if you want to do it the previous way using the playing word keyword or you can just go on and do it using the while true you can just go on and do that it is not necessary that you have to do it this way so i i, I guess you should just go on and do it as a task and you should just go on and code this programming loop of this very same code using the other two ways we have coded all right so just forget about the programming loop for now and we have specified this variable is blue that is again a kind of a fancy work to this code if you don't want to do it just don't do it again so this is the x and y coordinates that is going to be the initial position of the rectangle this is then the programming loop up till here so this was the fancy work we did with the is blue variable that we have set to true for initial so whenever you whenever or if you click on the space key and it is a key down event then the color of the rectangle is going to change accordingly because the is blue value is going to become false which was initially true so if you don't click on the space key the is blue is going to remain true if you click on the key space the space key then the is blue is going to become false these are the movements which you are going to detect so this is going to detect if the key has been pressed after that we are going to see that what key has been pressed if the key press was the upper key so we are going to change the value of y to negative 3 if the key pressed was key down then we are going to increment the value of y plus 3 similarly if it is the left key the x value is going to change to minus 3 and if it is the right key the x value is going to get incremented to plus 3 then comes the concept if you have clicked the space key or not it is going to change color accordingly if is blue is true then the color is going to be i guess the blue color and if it was not then it is going to be red after that you have created your rectangle which you are going to control using the arrow keys and these are the coordinates for that rectangle then comes pygame.display.flip that is going to help you display everything on your screen so i hope that you have understood this concept as well as the importance of key detection in pygame so I guess for this tutorial that is it. Thank you so much guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. 
Hey guys, what's up? I welcome you to another tutorial on this section where we are talking about the Pygame module in Python. In this tutorial, we are going to see how you are going to draw multiple shapes on Pygame window. So we are going to be drawing a polygon, we are going to be drawing an oval, we are going to be drawing a line, we are going to be drawing a circle and we are going to be drawing a rectangle. So there is a lot we are going to be drawing in this tutorial. And the, as the topic suggests that we are going to draw different shapes on Pygame window. So now there are four basic steps to display images on the Pygame window. The first step as usual is to use the set mode method of Pygame to create a display surface object which we already have done. The second step is to completely fill the surface object with white color using the fill method of Pygame display surface object. The third step is to draw different shapes onto a surface object using primitive drawing functions of Pygame that depends on the image or you can say the shape you are drawing and finally you have to use the display.update function which we already have done. So we already have gone through two steps that is step number one and step number four. So we are going to be just doing two steps, step number two and step number three. First we are going to fill the surface objects and in the third step we are going to draw different shape, shapes using the primitive drawing functions of Pygame. So before we go on and code those, we are going to specify different colors over here. So we are going to specify the white color. So white color is, as you know, 255, 255, 255. Then we are going to specify green color. And green color is 0, 255, 0. Then we are going to specify blue color. And blue color is basically 0, 1, 2, 8 and 0. Then we are going to specify black color. That is equal to 0, 0 and 0. And finally we are going to specify red color. That is 2, 5, 5, 0 and 0. So these are the five colors which we have specified. We have specified or defined the RGB values for these colors respectively. Now we are going to do the step number one, which is already done. So we don't need to do it. So that is to just have the set mode function used and to display the main window. After that, let me just go on and set the caption. So we are going to write in pygame dot window dot set caption and the caption is going to be drawing shapes so whatever window is going to pop up the heading for that window is going to be drawing shapes we have not code i guess the set caption method before so this is very simple you have to just use the pygame.window with that you have to write in set caption and in the set caption you can just go on and set any caption for the pygame window all right so now we are going to use window.fill and it is going to be filled with white color. We already have specified the RGB value for white so we don't have to do it again. After that, that is, uh, that is basically step number two. So let's just move on to step number three that is to draw different shapes using the primitive drawing methods or functions of Pygame. So the first shape we are going to be drawing is going to be the polygon. So we are going to write in Pygame dot draw dot polygon and the first argument is going to be the main window where it is going to appear. Then we are going to specify the color of the polygon. After that we are going to specify the coordinates where the polygon is going to start and where the polygon is going to end. Now, as you know that polygon basically has five sides. So we are going to specify the coordinates for all the five sides. So you don't have to memorize them. I just wrote it down from a website and it was 146.0 where the polygon is going to start. That are the X and Y coordinates. You can just go on and code your own or you can just believe in me. So the second one is 291. 106 then we have got 236 and 277 then we have got 56277 and then we have got 
zero and 106. So as you can see, one thing common over here that whatever is the ending of one is the starting of the other. So as you can see that 146.0, then we have got 2911.06, then we have got 236.277, then we have got 56.277, and finally we have got 0 and 106. So 0 and 106 is basically what that is going to join the polygon. All right, so I guess let's just run this code and see if a polygon has been drawn or not. All right, I guess we got some kind of error. It says spy game has no attribute window. Yes, I guess it has to be display over here and I guess this is going to work now. All right, as you can see that we have got a very beautiful looking polygon with five sides. It is filled with color green and this is what we were talking about actually. All right, so I guess we just misspelled some kind of color variation over here because we have specified blue over here and the rectangle that pop up was green doesn't matter I guess so let's just leave it the purpose was just to show you how to draw a polygon color does not matter all right the next shape we are going to draw is going to be a line so for that we are going to write in pygame dot draw dot line it is going to be drawn on the window the color is going to be green. I guess this time it is going to be blue. All right, and we are going to specify the coordinates for the line. Now the coordinates for the line are going to be just two, the starting point and the ending point. So let's just say that the starting point is 65 and the ending point is 250. That is the starting coordinate, the X and Y values for the starting coordinates. And then the ending points are, let's just say it is 120 and let's just say it is 250 again and then we are going to specify the thickness for that as well so let's just say that the thickness is 4 let's just run this code and as you can see that you have got a beautiful looking line but since this line is inside the rectangle so let's just change the position of this so we need to I guess change the y value to this 350 and let's just change it to 350 again and yes I guess this is good now all right it was green by the way all right the next shape we are going to be drawing is going to be a circle and again we are going to use the draw method so we are going to write in pygame dot draw dot circle this time and inside that we are going to specify the window parameter which means that it is going to be drawn onto the window after that we are going to specify its color let's just say the color of the circle is going to be black and after that we are going to specify the coordinates so let's just say that the coordinates are 350 the diameter for circle is going to be 20 and all right so it is going to go on to this coordinate of the window and it is going to draw a circle that is going to be the center point of the circle and this is going to be the radius of the circle and this is going to be the thickness all right so let's just run it and as you can see that you have got a beautiful looking small circle right over here you can just go on and inc increase the radius if you want to and that is going to draw a bigger circle for you the next shape we are going to draw is going to be an eclipse so we are going to write in pygame dot draw dot ellipse and this is going to get added to the window as well the color is going to be let's say red this time and we are going to specify the coordinates for the ellipse that are going to be 300 250 40, 80, and finally we are going to specify the thickness over here. Let's just run this code, and you can see that you have got a beautiful looking ellipse. So, this was for the ellipse. Let's just code our final shape. I guess that was to draw a rectangle as I promised. So, let's just draw a rectangle as well. You already have drawn a rectangle in the previous tutorial, so let's just go on with this a bit quick. It is going to add it to the root window. The color is going to be green, let's say. 
and the coordinates for the rectangle are let's just say 150 300 100 and 50 so let's just run this code and it is also going to have a rectangle right over here as you can see let's just change its color to black and let's just change the thickness of this ellipse to 3 now run this code now it looks a bit good all right so these are the shapes you have drawn the first shape is this very big looking oh, what was the name of this shape i just forgot it was a polygon yes and then we have drawn a line after that we drawn a circle after that we drawn an ellipse and finally we draw a rectangle so these this is how basically you can just go on and create objects like these using the draw method so what we have done here is that we have simply defined the rgb values for white green blue black red respectively after that we have done step number one that was to create a window step number two was to just change the background color for the main window step number three was to use the primitive drawing functions the first one was for draw polygon the second was for draw line then draw circle draw ellipse and draw a rectangle and finally step number four was already done that was pygame.display.update that was to show everything we have drawn onto the screen we have created in step number one all right so i hope that you have understood how to create these primitive drawing shapes using pygame functions so i guess that is it with this tutorial as well thank you so much guys for watching and i will see you guys in the next tutorial Hey guys what's up I welcome you to another tutorial on this section where we are discussing the pi game module in python. In this tutorial we will learn how to make an object jump using pi game library in python. Now there is a very basic formula from classic mechanics to make an object jump that is f equal to 1 by 2 mv square that is a formula from physics. Now here f is basically the force that is applied towards the upward or downward direction m is the mass of the object and v is the velocity now you need to understand here that the velocity is going down over time because when the object jumps the velocity will not increase more in this simulation when object reaches the ground the jump ends if jumping variable is true or false it indicates object is jumping or not if jumping is true object position will be updated according to the formula we have stated that is f equal to 1 over 2 mv square so let's just move on and code this very interesting example that is going to help us to make an object jump in pi game all right so we have got our module we have got the initialization part we have got our main window and then we have got the caption so let's just name this window to let's say jumping tutorial all right after that what we are going to do is that we are going to define the object initial coordinates so we are going to specify them to be let's say x equal to 200 and y equal to 200 as well after that we are going to also define the dimensions for the object so we are going to specify the width to be 30 and we are going to specify the height as well that is going to be let's say 40 now we are going to store if the player is jumping or not for initial value we are going to initialize jumping to false so jumping is going to be false in the initial cases and when we want it to become positive or when we click on certain key when it is going to jump we are going to make it equal to true all right now what we are going to do is that we are going to do our gaming loop so we already have coded our gaming loop right here you can see we've got while playing we've got our main window now inside this we are going to create an object which we are going to make jump so let's just say we are going to have a rectangle which is going to act as act as an object which is going to jump so it is going to get added to the main window the color for that is going to be 25500 then we are going to specify the position for that so xy is going to be the position for the rectangle and we are going to specify the dimension for the rectangle as well so the dimensions are going to be whatever width and height we have specified so the rectangle is going to get added to the window this is going to be the color of the rectangle 
This is going to be the initial coordinates for the rectangle and this is going to be the dimensions for the rectangle. After that we have got our gaming loop already so we don't need to get into that. Alright, after that what we are going to do is right here is that we are going to make a key that is going to detect some kind of key detection. We already have covered that so we don't need to discuss it for now. So it is going to be keys equal to pi game dot key dot get pressed. So we are going to check if jumping equal equal to false which is for the initial value you can see that it is false. It is going to be F A L S E. So if jumping equal equal to false and we are going to check if the keys is pi game dot space key. So we are going to detect if the key that was pressed was the space key. Then what we are going to do is that we are going to make jumping equal to true. So if the jumping was false and if the key that was pressed which means that whatever this is basically the part where the key is going to be detected. So if you have clicked on the space key so it is going to store it in this variable because it has detected it using this statement. So it is going to store it in this variable. It is going to check if jumping is false. If it is it is going to check if the key that has been pressed which means that it is an array if it contains the space key or not. So if it does contain the space key it is going to make jumping equal to true. Alright so outside this what it is going to do is that it is going to check if jumping was true or not. So right outside here it is going to see if jumping which means that if it is true which is going to be true if this condition was met since it is a sequential order in which the code is going to get executed. So in the sequential order this statements or these set of statements are going to get executed first and if the space key was pressed jumping is going to become true. So this condition over here is going to be true if this statement here has been executed. So if jumping what we are going to do is that we are going to calculate the force using the formula we have studied that was 1 by 2 mv square. So we are going to write an f equal to 1 by 2. We are going to multiply it with m. We are going to multiply it by v square. So it is going to be f equal to 1 by 2 mv square. Now for the m and v you can see that we are getting an error because we have not initialized the values for M and v. So right outside this gaming loop at the top here what we are going to do is that we are going to initialize the value. So let's just say that v is equal to 5 and let's just say that m is equal to 1. So these are the values for m and v. So now the error is going to be removed as you can see that the red lines have disappeared. So after that what we are going to do is that if jumping equal to true we have calculated the force and now what we are going to do is that we are going to update or you can say change the y coordinates. So we are going to write in y minus equal to f which means that whatever force has been applied or it is a specific force that is going to get calculated because we have got a static value for the mass. We have got a static value for v. 1 by 2 and 2 is already static so it is going to be a certain value. So whenever you click on the space key it is going to change the y coordinate to this value which means y equal to y minus f. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to decrease the velocity as well. Now decreasing velocity while going up and becomes negative while coming down. So we are going to write in v equal to v minus 1 and we are going to see if the object has reached its maximum height or not. So for that we are going to use the velocity concept. We are going to write in if velocity is less than 0 then what we will do is that we are going to negative sign is added to the counter negative velocity which means that the mass value is going to decrement. Now it is going to equal to m equal minus 1 and now what we are going to also check here is that we are going to check if velocity or you can say that the, if the object has reached its original state or not. So we are going to check it using if v equal equal to 
minus 6. Then what we will do is that we will make jumping equal to false. All right. After we have made jumping equal to false, what we will do is that we are going to set the original values for V and we are going to set the original values for M as well. So we are going to write in V equal to 5 and M equal to 1 that are the original values for M and V. After that, what we will do is that we are going to have a dis I, we are going to add a delay timer here so we are going to write in pi game dot time dot delay and let's just say it is going to add a delay of 10 millisecond only so let me just run this code and after that i'm going to re-explain what we have coded so far so let's just run this code all right i guess we've got some problem it says that module pi game has no attribute get and this is for line number 24, line number 24, right here, it is going to be pi game dot even dot get, my bad. Now let's just run it and let's just hope that it works now. All right, it has worked perfectly. You can see a white screen, you can see a right rectangle. So if I click on any key, nothing happens. But if I click on the space key, you can see that the object is jumping so if i click on it once you can see that the object is actually jumping and you can see that after jumping it is returned to its original position now the reason behind that it is returning to its original position is that we have supplied the conditions for that as well so let's just revise this code and you are going to understand it much better now since you have seen the output now as well all right so let's just start from here. These are the initial values for the rectangle. This is the dimension for the rectangle. Now we have initialized a variable that is going to make jumping equal to false because when we run the code, we don't want the rectangle to keep jumping without giving us the command to rectangle to jump. So it is not going to jump on its own. We are going to give that instruction. So that's why jumping in the initial is going to be false. Then this is the playing equal to true, that is for the gaming loop, you already know that. Then these are the initial values for velocity and the mass. The force is going to get calculated from these values. All right, after that, this is the programming loop, the gaming loop you call, and this is the simple window.fill that fills the background of the window with white color. After that, this is the rectangle. It is being added to the main window. This is the color of the rectangle that is red then this is the x and y dimension of the rectangle this is the dimension of the rectangle this is sorry this is not dimension this is the position of the rectangle all right it is to be a comma right here all right after that this is the gaming loop that is going to check if the cross key has been clicked you already know that so i don't need to get into this after that this is going to basically detect if a key has been pressed or not so you already have covered this concept in the previous tutorials as well so i don't need to get into deep detail of this as well it is going to only detect and it is going to create an array of buttons with itself so let's just say i click on z x c v b and m and i also click on the space key so in the array which is being created right here which is being uh, created using the detection concept here it is also going to have the space key in its array so after that, when it check if jumping equal equal to false, it is false for the initial value. So if it is false, what it is going to do is that it is going to check if the key array has the space key pressed or not. Since as I told you that we have also pressed the space key, so it is also going to contain the space key in its array as well. So when it finds the space key, it is going to make jumping equal to true. After that, it is going to check if jumping, which means that if it is true, it is true because we have pressed the space key. It is going to calculate the force now. We already have the initial values for mass and velocity. So it is going to calculate the force right here. After that, it is going to change the Y coordinates for that. So if I just run this code, you're going to see that what it is actually doing is that when I click on this, you can see that it jumps and it comes back. It jumps and it comes back. All right, you know that this, this point over here of the rectangle, or you can say this main window, is actually the zeroth, zeroth location. 
as much as you move this rectangle towards the upward direction, you know that the value of y is decreasing. Or in other words, you can see that if you move this rectangle towards the left side, the value of x is decreasing. But since the jumping is done in the upward direction, so when the rectangle moves in the upward direction while, while jumping upwards, what it is doing is that it is actually moving upwards towards the y coordinate or in other words, the value of y coordinate is decreasing here. Now, let me just clarify this concept right from here. Now, actually this is the 200, 200, that is the position of the rectangle. So if I just change it to, let's just say it is, let's just make it the very same. Let's just change this to 250 and run this code. You can see that the rectangle is more downwards now which means that the value of y increases down the order but it decreases when you move upward. So when I click on the space key and the rectangle move upwards, the value of y is actually decreasing. Now how much this value is to be decreased is determined by this force calculation right over here. So it is going to calculate the force based on the values of velocity and mass and it is going to decrease the y coordinate according to that. It is going to subtract whatever is the answer of this from that 250 which we have specified right here at the top. That is the initial value of the y coordinate of the rectangle. So what it is doing is that it is changing the y coordinate for the rectangle and it is moving the rectangle in that direction. Now when the rectangle has moved in the upward direction, we also want the rectangle to just come back to us as well. So for that, what we are going to do is that we are going to decrease the velocity. Now, when you decrease the velocity, the y value or sorry, not the y value, the force value is automatically going to decrease. And when the value decrease, it is going to make the rectangle go in the downward direction because when the value subtracted becomes less, the, the y coordinate value is going to just increase a bit from this value which the force has calculated when v was 2. So when v decreases, the y coordinate value in other words increases. So when it increases, the rectangle is going to start moving downwards. But we also want that to stop. We just don't want the rectangle to just go up and just go down into the bottom. What I'm telling is that when I click on this, the rectangle goes up and return back to its original position. If you don't do this condition over here, what it is going to do is it is going to make the rectangle jump and after that it is going to just drop down the screen but we don't want that to happen. So that's why we are writing if velocity is less than zero, what we want is that we want mass to decrease. After that we are going to check if velocity equal equal to minus six. What we want is that we want the jumping to be false. When jumping becomes false, the rectangles just stop it stays at its original position. We are going to initialize the V5 and M1 for us to make the rectangle jump again. So when you jump the rectangle once, this piece of code get executed and the jumping becomes false. Initial values for V and M are initialized and store in it V and M respectively for velocity and mass. And you can just go on and click the space key again and it is going to start executing the code right from the start of this gaming loop right over here. It is going to again check for the keys pressed. It is going to again make jumping equal to true because it was made false when the rectangle has returned to its original position and that is exactly what is going on. So I hope that you have understood the concept of jumping of an object Jumping off on a, of an object is basically very important. You might have played some kind of ball game where you have to just uh, destroy some kind of obstacles at the top where a ball comes, it uh, just it just hit the bar which with which, which which you are controlling actually, and it just go back and it just destroy things. So jumping concept is very 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 important. For example, you are creating let's say a game where you have to bounce the ball then this concept is going to help you a lot in such kind of games. So I hope that you have understood this concept of jumping. It is a very important, very interesting and a kind of tricky concept. So I hope just just hope that you have understood this. 
So I guess for this tutorial that is it. Thank you so much guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Hey guys what's up I welcome you to another tutorial on this section where we are covering the Pygame module in Python. In this tutorial we are going to see that how we can play an audio file in our game made of course using through the Pygame module. Now in order to play music or audio files in Pygame the Pygame.mixer is used. This module contains classes for loading sound objects and controlling playback. Now there are basically four steps you have to follow in order to play or load any kind of audio file in your game. So let's just have a look at these. The first step is to start the mixer. Now to start the mixer you have to write in mixer.init. Now up till now in the tutorials you have seen that you were initializing basically the Pi game. So from now where you are going to deal with music you are going to not use that thing. You are going to use mixer.init which means that you are initializing all the modules from the mixer module because in here you are not going to write in import pygame. Here you are going to write in from pygame import mixer. So when you are importing mixer you have to also initialize everything that is a part of that module. In other words you are actually initializing the subclasses of that module mixer which is going to be the first step in loading or playing an audio in Pygame. Step number two says that you have to load the song which you want to load or play in your game. So to load it you have to use the mixer module you are going to write in mixer.music.load and in the parameters as you can see you have to specify the song name. Now directory here very much matters. Now when you are loading an image you uh, have noticed that the image was actually in the directory in which we are working. So the song also has to be in the same directory where you are work working so that it can easily load that song. So all you have to do is that you have to write in the name of the song, the extension of the song and it is going to load that song for you and it is going to play it according to your choice and according to the place where you want it to play. Step number three is to basically set the volume for whatever song you have played. It is done using again the mixer module. You have to write in mixer.music.set volume and you have to specify the volume which you want to set as a parameter to this function. And finally the last step is to start playing the music. After you have started the mixer, you have loaded the song, you have set the volume. Of course you want to play the song also. So to start playing the music or audio, all you have to do is that you have to write in mixer.music.play and what it is going to do is that it is going to play the song or audio for you. So I hope that you have understood the main four steps that are going to be involved in this tutorial. So let's just move on to the example part. So right here we are going to now start from the very beginning because this time the module is also as I told you going to be different. So here we are going to write in from Pygame import mixer and mixer is going to be by default installed here you don't have to install it if it generates any kind of error which it should not because you already have your pygame installed and when pygame is, is installed since we are importing mixer from pygame so that's why it should not generate any kind of error but if it if it is generating any error you can just go on and install it but I assure you it is not going to tell you to install it it is going to work automatically. Alright so now let's just move on to the first step that was to start the mixer. So to start the mixer you have to actually initialize the subclasses of the mixer module. So you have to write in mixer.init that is going to initialize or you can say it is going to start the mixer for you. Now the second step is to basically load the song. So to load the song you have to write in mixer.music.load and in the parameters you have to write in the name of the song. So if I just show you here in the directory over here, you can see that I have got this song, song.wav. So this is the song basically which I am going to load. It is also present in the directory in which I, which I am working as you can see right here. It is in the gaming folder right here song.wav is the extension. So right here I am going to write in song.wav. 
After that, I'm going to move towards step number three, that is to set the volume for this music. So it is going to be mixer.music dot set volume and let's just say that the volume is going to be 0 0.8 after that we are going to finally move to the last step that is to play it so i'm going to write in mixer dot music dot play and that is it finally what we have to do is that we have to code the infinite gaming loop so for that i'm going to write in while true what i want is that i want the music to be controlled in a certain way now how is that going to be done now for example what i want to do here is that when i click on the p key i want the music to pause if i click on the r key i want the music to resume and when i click on the e key i want the music to just exit the program so right here i'm going to just ask the user here i've already written that so i'm going to just write in print not print it is going to ask the user to press P2 pause the video or you can say audio since it is an audio not a video similarly you can ask the user to press R to resume the audio and similarly finally what you can do is that you can just write in press E to exit the audio program alright so these are the three instructions which it is going to follow and it is going to ask you so now we need to implement them as well so right here what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write an entry and entry is going to equal to an input value which we are going to be uh, which is going to be a string so this entry over here which is going to be a part of the input is basically going to be either this p either this r or either this e so whatever we click it is going to take that as an input and after that what it is going to do is that it is going to check it using certain if conditions so i'm going to write an if entry equal equal to p which means that i want to pause the music so what it is going to do is that from the mixer module it is going to use the function pause so it is going to just pause the music after that we can just write in one else condition where we can just write in else if entry equal equal to r which means that i want to resume the audio what i can do is that i can just call the unpause method of the pi game and it is going to be unpause all right and finally what we can do is that we can just write in one more query over here that is going to be else if entry equal equal to e then what i want to do is that i want the music to stop so i'm going to use the stop function from the music library of this pi game so i'm going to just write in dot stop and also i'm going to break this from this infinite gaming loop all right so i guess that is it so i hope that you have understood what we have coded so far what we have done here is that we have first imported pi game we have imported mixer from pi game module then we have initialized the mixer then we have loaded the song which we wanted to play then we have set the volume then we have start playing it and after that we want to control that music as well so to control it we are going to have three instructions which is basically going to be the choice of the user that whether he want to pause the audio whether he want to resume the audio or whether he want to exit the audio program so for that i'm going to create an entry field where it is going to ask the user to enter either p either r or e so to detect that what we are going to do is that we are going to use if else conditions so if the entry is going to be p we are using the pause method of the uh, mixer module if the entry is R, we are using the unpause method of the mixer module. And if the entry is E, then we are using the stop module of the mixer module. That is a part of Pi game. So it is going to act accordingly. So let's just, all right, just before running the game, we need to also record the system audio. So I'm going to just do that. So I will just pause this video here and I'm going to resume that as well. All right, so now I have turned on the system audio recording as well. So now let's just run this code. 
and I guess we need to click on R and it is going to now start playing the music and as you can see that you can now hear the music that is being played that is the file which we have loaded actually so now if I click on P and click enter it is going to pause the audio as you can just hear it now if I want to just resume it back I'm going to just click on R click enter and it is going to resume the audio back for me now if I want to let's just say that I want to exit from this audio program what I can simply do is that I can just go on and type E and I'm going to just click enter and it is going to turn off the audio as well as it is going to turn off or you can say exit the program for me or you can say exit the infinite gaming loop as well. So I hope that you have understood what we have covered in this tutorial. We have seen how to load an audio file in Pygame and how to play it according to your choice. We have also controlled the audio using a set of instructions that were done very simply using an entry field and a set of if else conditions. So I guess that is it with this tutorial. Thank you so much guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Hey guys, what's up? I welcome you to another tutorial on this section where we are covering the Pygame module in Python and in this tutorial we are going to see how to move an object in Pygame. Now a tutorial or two back you have seen how to jump an object. Now in this tutorial we are going to see how to move an object around the window. Now if you just remember a previous code where we were able to move a rectangle as you can see that this was the previous output where if you click on the downward key you can see that the rectangle moved downward you click on the right key the rectangle moved towards the right direction and you can see that wherever you move the rectangle is going to move right there and there was also one thing that you can see that whatever you draw it is going to keep copying the pattern and you can just see that wherever you move it is going to make a line behind now what we will do in this tutorial especially is that we are going to just not do such kind of things we are going to just make a rectangle and we are going to make it move around the window one more error you can see in this code is that when you move let's say towards the right side you can see that the rectangle has moved outside the window now in this tutorial we are not going to do such kind of things we are going to confine the rectangle to this window as well as we are not going to draw these blue lines behind wherever we move so we'll just close this window and this is the code from our jumping tutorial but we have absolutely deleted some line from here or what we have remained here is basically the import pi game the initializing thing the set mode we have got the caption which is going to be moving rectangle this time or you can just make it equal to moving object and we have got the initial values for the rectangle we have got the dimensions for the rectangle we have got the playing equal to true that is for the gaming loop we have got the gaming loop we have got the key detection and in this tutorial we are going to detect the arrow keys the four arrow keys that is going to help us move the rectangle around the window similarly we have got our window filled with white color we have already created our rectangle with added it, to it into the window the color of the rectangle the x and y dimensions and the dimensions of the rectangle this is not the dimension this is the initial position of the rectangle and finally we have also got pygame.display.update all right so now what we are going to add in this code so that it is going to help us to move an object around the window for now if we just run this code you can see that we have got only a rectangle which is unable to move anywhere when we click on the arrow keys so what we will do here is that we are going to make this rectangle move so to make this rectangle move what we are we will do first is that we are going to define the velocity or speed of the movement with which this rectangle is going to move so let's just say that the speed with which this rectangle is going to move is going to be 7 all right after defining the speed what we will do is in the gaming loop right down not here right over here we are going to have pi game dot time dot delay and here we are going to add a delay of 10 milliseconds after that we already have got our gaming loop 
we already have got our key detection. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to check in this array that is going to be a part of the keys we pressed and we are going to detect only four keys. And as I told you that we are also going to confine the rectangle to the window which we have created that is the 500 cross 500 window. We don't want the rectangle to move outside that window because when you are playing a game you don't want the ball to go out of the window. So that is exactly what we are going to do here. We are going to confine the rectangle to the window as well as we are not going to draw the pattern behind us where we move our rectangle. So what we will do here is that we are going to use the if condition and we are going to check in the array we are going to write in pygame dot key left and if the left key is pressed what we want is that we don't want the x coordinate to be greater than zero because when you are moving in the left direction if you just notice this arrow key when you move towards the left direction it is going to move in this direction. I can't run this code now because it is going to generate error. So just assume this arrow to be the rectangle. So if I click on the left key it is going to move in this direction. So I don't want it to move outside this window. You can see that the arrow I don't want it to move outside of the window. That is exactly what I'm going to do with my rectangle. I don't want my rectangle to move outside the window I have specified that is this 500 cross 500 window. So to do that what I have to do is that I don't want the rectangle to move outside x is greater than 0 which means that I don't want the value for x coordinate to be negative. Now this is the position where basically the x value is 0. So what I'm going to specify here not here I'm going to specify it here and x is greater than 0. So for the key left pressed and for x is greater than 0 what I want is that I want to decrement the x coordinate because this is the position when you are right here and let's say you want to move here basically the x value is changing because this is the position where x is equal to 0. So that's why the x value is going to get decremented and I'm going to write an x minus equal to velocity. Alright after that we are going to do it for the right key. So I will just write an if keys pygame dot key right and what I will do here is that I'm going to check if x is less than 500 that is the size of the window minus the width of the rectangle because I don't want the left side of the rectangle to move outside towards the right side and I don't want the left side of the rectangle to move outside of this left side. So that is why I have to subtract the width of the rectangle from that as well because I don't want any part of the rectangle to move outside the window. So th that's why I'm going to subtract that width from this so that the whole of the rectangle remains inside my window. Alright with this what I'm going to do is that I'm going to increment the velocity. Similarly I'm going to do the very same job with the up and down key but this time the y value or the y coordinates is going to come into account. So right here I'm going to write in if keys pi game dot key up and this time it is going to be for y is greater than 0 because when you click on the up key the rectangle is going to move in this direction. So this is basically the zero position of the y coordinate so I don't want it to go outside of this position so that's why I'm going to specify it that it has to move but it is has to move only until and unless y is greater than 0. So for that I'm going to decrement it the velocity value and finally the last detection is going to be for the downward keys. So it is going to be if keys pi game dot key down and this time it is going to be with and y is less than the height of the rectangle minus not height it is going to be from y is less than 500 that is the size of the window and then I'm going to subtract the height from this and in this condition it is going to increment the y coordinate so it is going to be y plus equal to velocity and that is going to be it. So let's just 
run this code. I guess we have got the velocity. Yes, we have got it. So let's just run this code. All right, so you can see that you have got your rectangle. If I click on the up key, you can see that the rectangle is moving up. And as you can see that I keep clicking the up key, but it is not moving outside of the window. When I click on the right key, it is going to move towards the right direction. But as you can see that it is not moving outside the window, even if I am clicking the right key. Similarly, if I just go down, it is going to go down. It is going to go left. It is going to go up and it is going to go in any direction, but it is not as you can see not copying the pattern behind where it is moving as well it is as well as it is not moving outside the window in any direction and this thing over here which we have done that is minus width minus height is making the whole rectangle stay here if i just remove it from here it is going to move this rectangle up till here let me just show you that so if i just remove this from here and i just remove this from here as well and now I run this code, you can see that the rectangle is going to just move out. As you can see, it just went out and it is going to also move towards the right direction outside. It is not going to go towards the left side or the upward side because their X is not greater than zero and here Y is not greater than zero. But the condition for subtracting the width and height is for the right direction and for the downward direction where the rectangle is going to go down and it is only going to go down till here it is not going to go down up so far and for the right direction it is only going to move up till here when I move it up here it is only going to move till right this point so this is exactly what is going on so that's why you need the two things that is to subtract the width and subtract the height and when you then run it it is not going to go anywhere all right, so I think I don't need to re-explain this code. Nothing new here. All we have got is basically two things, which is changed from the previous tutorial. That was to not copy the pattern behind us and also not to move outside the window. So when you are playing a ball game, you don't want the ball to go outside of the window. I hope you don't want that too. So if you want that, you can just go on and remove these conditions. So I don't want that so that's why I have added these conditions. So I hope that you have understood how to move any kind of object. You can just go on add an image and you can just move up. You can just go on and make it move. For example, you might have played the snake game that is very popular among kids. So if you have played that snake game, you might know that how it is basically an image that is moving outside the window as well because for that these conditions are not there. So that is very easy. You can just go on and add an image and move it. You can just go on and create a circle and move that. You can just go on and create a rectangle as we have did in this tutorial and you can just move it around the window. So I hope that you have understood it. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Hey guys, what's up? I welcome you to another tutorial on this section where we are covering the Pygame module in Python. And in this tutorial, we are going to see how you are going to create interactable buttons using Pygame. Now a game must have interactable buttons that can control different events in the game to make the game more controlled and to add a proper graphical user interface in it. These can be treated in Pygame by creating a rectangle onto the screen and then superimposing the indicated text on it. For this we will be using various functions like draw.rectangle screen.blade which you have been previously using so there is nothing new. So to add more liveliness to it we can change the color of the button as the mouse has hovered on it. This can be done by using a function that updates the x and y position of the mouse pointer and by storing it as a tuple in a variable. Then what we can do after that is that we can set the boundaries of the rectangle into respective variables and check if the mouse is in those boundaries if so the color of the block will be changed to lighter shade to indicate that the button is interactable so to go on with the coding part what we have done already is that we have imported pygame we have initialized pygame we have got our main window that is a 720 by 720 window and i think we need to change the caption of the previous tutorial this time it has to be interactable button creation so this is what we are going to be doing we are going to create interactable button in pygame after that we also have got our gaming loop 
So all we have to do is that we have to create a button here and we are going to make it interactable so that when the mouse is hovered on it, it is going to change its color and when we click on that button, something is going to happen. So all this is going to be a part of this tutorial. It is a very interesting and a very important tutorial regarding game programming because buttons in games are very important. Whenever you start on a game, it has buttons. It asks you to start a game, it asks you to quit a game. It asks you to, let's say, for example, if you are playing a war type game, it is going to ask you to change weapons like things, change the map where you are playing. In any game you play, you are going to see buttons. So in this tutorial, we are going to see how we are going to create buttons and how we are going to also make them interactable, which means that when you click on the button, something is going to happen. So the first thing we are going to do over here is that we are going to define those colors to which the button is going to change when the mouse is going to hover over it. So we are going to define a light shade color and we are going to define a dark shade color. So we are going to name them as the color of the button that is light. So it is going to be the color button light. So it is going to be, let's just say it is going to be 170, 170, 170. So this is going to be the light shade color and we are also going to define the color of the right not the right it is going to be the dark button so it is going to equal to let's say 100 100 and 100 so this is a rgb ratio in which the color is now going to be dark after that what we will do is that we are going to acquire the width of the screen and we are going to store the height of the screen so to store the width of the screen into a variable we are going to write in width equal to window dot get width and not this it is going to be parenthesis and to get the height of the window we are going to write in window dot get height so it is going to get us the width and height of the window and after that we are also going to create a button font variable so it is going to be button font that is going to be the text that is going to appear on the button because whenever you see a button you don't see a blank button it has some text onto it so that is basically a font so here we are going to define that font so it is going to be button font and that is going to equal to pygame dot font dot system font and let's just say that the style for the text is going to be corbel and then we are going to define the thickness of the uh, text that is going to appear so let's just say it is 35 you can just make it bold italic or underline if you want to that can also be done right over here so after that we are going to just render the text that is written in the font so for that we are going to write in text equal to button font dot render and let's just say that the text on the button is going to say bye bye so this is going to be the text on the button we are going to make rendering equal to true and we are also going to define a color for it so let's just define a color right here at the top or let's just define it right over here or let's just define it at the top so it is much more easy to look so it is going to be let's just say color equal to 255 255 and 255 so this is going to be the color that is going to be used and after that we are going to go into the gaming loop where we already have got our gaming loop present so it is not going to be playing equal to false it is going to be by game dot quit all right so it is going to just quit the game for us if you click on the cross button all right, after that, what we are going to do is that we are going to check if a mouse is clicked or not. So for that, what we are going to do is that we are going to move right here and we are going to write in if event dot type equal equal to pygame dot mouse button down. Then what we want is that we want to check if the mouse is clicked on the button. Then what we will do is that we are going to terminate the game so to terminate the game what we are going to do here is that we are going to write in if 
the button has been clicked or not. So this is the condition where we are going to check if the button has been clicked or not. So that is going to be if width by 2 is less than or equal to the mouse event. And that is less than or equal to the width by 2 plus 140 and the height by 2 is less than or equal to the mouse event 1 and that is less than or equal to the height by 2 plus 140 then what we are going to do is that we are going to just quit the game so this is basically the condition where we are checking that if the button has been clicked on or not so basically width by 2 and this height by 2 is going to determine the position of the button now what does this mean is that this is going to be the length of the button that is 140 140 that is the position of the button sorry and this is going to be the starting position of the location of this location in the screen where the button is going to appear for you so i hope that you have understood it and after that we are going to simply fill the window and let's just change this color as well so this is going to be the color for the main window after that we are going to define mouse equal to pygame dot mouse dot get position and we are also going to check if the mouse has hovered on a button if it does we want to change it to a lighter shade so what we will do is that we are going to just copy this condition that is actually the location of the button so what we want is that if the mouse is hovered on this location we have specified where the button is actually located so what we want to do is that we are going to just change the color so we are going to write in if or it is going to be done right down here after we have got the mouse position so we are going to write in if after that we are going to specify the condition and after specifying the condition we are going to write in pygame dot draw dot rectangle it is going to get added to the main window and the color is going to be the color of the button that is light and we are going to also specify the position that is this position position that is the position of the button that is width by 2 and height by 2 and we are also going to specify 140 140 that is the dimensions for the button so right here we are going to specify all of these things in an array so we are going to define width by 2 height by 2 that is the location of the button and we are also going to specify the dimensions of the button that are 140 140 which I've also explained at the top and what if the button is not that location then we also want the button to get dark so for that we are going to specify an else condition and what we will do is that we are going to simply copy this from here we are going to paste it right here and we are going to change this thing over here only to dark the rest is going to remain the very same and after that since we are rendering things over here so we also want the blit function here so we are going to write in windows dot blit what we want to blit is basically the text and what is basically the location is width by 2 plus 50 and it is going to be height by 2 let's just remove this 54 from here because we want the button to be centered well so I guess that is it let me just run this code and see if it works and after that we are going to come on to the recap part so I guess we have got some kind of issue with this let's just run and see what is that all right we have got a screen we have got a button that says bye bye if I click on this button everything disappears so this means this is not an issue all right so let me just re-explain what we have been coding so basically what we have done here is that we have specified a color that is going to be the color for the button after that we have also specified the buttons that is when the mouse is going to hover on the button that this color is going to appear and then when the mouse is going to move away this color is going to appear after that what we have done here is that we have got the width and height of the screen 
through which we are going to actually position our window at this position our button sorry at the center that is width by 2 and height by 2 then 140 140 are basically the dimensions for the button I know that this is a very big button but doesn't matter I guess after that what we have done is that we have specified the font for the button using which we have then rendered our text that is bye bye so basically it is going to be rendered using corbel style and 35 as the font thickness so it is going to be text equal to button font dot render bye bye is going to get rendered since it is bye bye so that's why when we clicked on it it is going to close the program we are making rendering true and this is going to be the color as you can see right here if you just run this code you can see right here that this is basically the color we are using so if you cl click on it you can see that it just disappear after that we have got our gaming loop no need to explain that and in here what we are checking is that we are checking for a mouse button down event so if the mouse button down event happens and after that it is going to check for one more condition that if a mouse button down event has occurred and if it has occurred at the position where the button is located that is width by 2 height by 2 as well as the dimensions of the button because if you click anywhere on the button it is going to close for example if I just click on this corner of the button and click on it it is going to close the program so that's why we are going to check if width by 2 is less than or equal to the mouse event as well as it, as well as it is also less than width by 2 plus 140 that is the dimension of the button as well as height by 2 is less than or equal to the mouse 1 button is less than or equal to height by 2 plus 140 that is the dimension of the button in respect with the height of the button so if you click on anywhere on the button what it is going to do is that it is going to quit the program so if a mouse down button mouse down event occurs at this location where the button is located the game is going to just quit so after that we have specified the color for the window that is 60 25 60 that appears to be some kind of a purple shade color doesn't matter after that what we have got is that we have to get the position of the mouse so after getting the position of the mouse that is exactly what we are going to be using right here at the top as well which you can see right here so that's why we also we want the mouse position to be located so that we can check it with this width by 2 height by 2 as well as width by 2 plus 140 and height by 2 plus 140 because if you don't know the location of the mouse how we are going to check if the mouse is at the location is the, is at that location where we want it to be or not so that's why we have also to get the position of the mouse and store it in a variable through where we can just go on and check it so after that what we are going to do is that we are going to check for the button if only we have hovered over the button and not just clicked it as you can see right here if I just hover on the button you can see that it changed to a silver kind of shade and, and if I just remove from it you can see that it becomes a dark gray shade so as you can see over here that we are checking if we are at any location of the button what we want is that we want to draw a rectangle around the button that is going to be of light color that we have specified over here that is the light gray color and this is going to be the location of the button and this is the dimension of the button so this is where basically the rectangle is going to be drawn that is exactly the position where our button is located else if we are not hovering over the mouse we want the button to be dark gray so that's why we are going to specify the color button dark here and again this is going to be the position where the button is located we don't have to add these spaces so let's just remove these spaces over here all right seems good all right so after that we are going to just split the window where we are actually making the rendering part we want to render the text that is going to be at width by 2 and height by 2 as you can see right here it is a pair right over here and this 50 I have specified at the start and then I've deleted it if I just show you now you can see that it just moved out so that's why we don't want to do that what we can do simply is that we can just add it right over here and let's just see if the text has been centered uh, I guess that looks a bit more let's just add a 20 into it and let's just see the location of the text now I guess now it is much more centered 
so right from here you can just go on and center the text which we are rendering through this part so you can just change the position of the text where you want it to appear on the button so i hope that you have understood how to create a button in pygame and how to make that button interactable as you can see that when i click on this button it is going to just disappear things so all you want to do with the button interaction you can do right here what we have done only is that we have just closed our program what you can do is anything you can do anything you want to do after you have spotted what you what is the key that is going to be pressed so in our case the key is going to be the mouse down event all right this was not what i want to open because this was the constants.py file for the mouse down event so if the mouse down event occur you can just go on and do it with the key space button as well you can just go on with the enter key you can do it with the shift key whatever button you want to do this thing with you can just go on and do that and after that you have to specify the position of the button that if the mouse is at that location of the button or not and this is going to be the area where we are going to get the position of the mouse so i hope that you have understood how to do this you need to understand this concept because this is very very important in game development it is a very vital part of game development in pi game so i guess that's it with this tutorial thank you so much guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial hey guys what's up i welcome you to another tutorial in this section where we are covering the pi game module in python and in this tutorial we are going to see how you can add boundaries to an object in python so basically in this tutorial we are going to make an object that is going to be a ball and we are going to make it bounce back when it comes into contact with any other or object or in simple words you can say that if it comes into contact with the boundaries of the main window you have created now if you talk about the boundaries concept that why boundaries to any games is important then you might have noticed that in snake games in the space invader games in the pinball game and many other games like this which you might have played the boundary condition is very important for instance if you talk about the pinball game then the ball bounces at the boundaries of the screen in pinball if you have played the snake game then you might have noticed that in the snake game it is game over if your snake bites itself whereas in the space invader if your plane collides with any meteorite then it is a game over for you so all of these determine how important the boundary condition is so in this tutorial we are going to make the bowl bounce back after collision with the boundaries of the main window so the idea behind this boundary is to change the position of the ball or object in reverse direction as soon as it hits the wall of the window so let's just see how it is going to be done and let's just see how we are going to make the ball bounce off the boundary of the main window so the first thing we are going to do is that we are going to make a pi game window which we already have done so we are saving just time here we have got the pi game we have got initial initializing part we have got the main window that is 700 by 550 what we need here is a basically a set of colors which we are going to use later so right here we are going to specify that set of color so the first color is going to be white white is determined by 255 255.255 then we are going to have a red color as well now red is basically 25500 then we are going to have a green here and green is basically going to be 02550 then we are going to have a blue here and blue is basically going to be 000 255 and finally we are going to have a black color and black is basically determined using 000 so it is going to be 000 so after that we are going to set the display for our window so the display is going to be the the caption sorry is going for the display is going to be let's just say it is going to be according to the name of the tutorial that is adding boundaries to objects now after that we have set the caption and we have made our main window the second step is to basically create a ball 
Now the ball is going to be just a circle that is going to drawn on the screen. Now that will be written in a while loop. Here what we are going to do is that we are going to declare its position and its speed. Initially, the ball will be placed at the center that is going to be the position where height and width have half the values than their original values that is width by 2 and height by 2. Then what we are going to do is that we are going to increase the speed of the ball by respective values of x move and y move. As both x and y directions are changing, the ball will move in a diagonal direction and its further path will be dependent on the colliding body. So right after this, right here, what we are going to do is that we are going to define the ball x. That is going to be width by 2 minus 12. That is going to be the initial position of the ball. And after that, we are going to define, since we don't have our initial position, we need to specify them as well, I guess. Right at the top here, we have to define the width to be 700 and we have to define the height to be 550 here and this time the window is going to be done using that. It is going to be width, height, I guess that is good enough. Now let's just move down and do this part. So this is going to be the ball x position. After that, we are going to define the ball y position. That is going to be height by 2 minus 12. So these are going to be the initial values. Or you can say that what we are doing here is that we are declaring variables for the ball. After that, as I told you that the ball is then going to move according to the collision. So that is going to be done using the ball x move. So it is going to be a variable ball x move. That is going to be three steric random dot choice. And the choice is going to be one minus one. And we also have to import the random module at the top here. So right at the top here, we are going to define import the random module. So I guess that is going to solve our problem as you can see. So this is going to be the ball position and after that we are going to define the ball y move position that is going to be 3. After that we are also going to define the ball pixels which means that the ball thickness is also going to be defined so it is going to be ball pixel equal to 25 so this is going to be the length of the ball. After that we are going to start coding the basic game running loop and we are also going to give background to our main window. So right inside here, what we will do is that we are going to write in window dot fill and we are going to fill it with red color. Then comes the major part of our game. We are going to provide a condition that if the ball's X position is greater than the width of the screen or it is less than zero, that is if the ball is colliding or coming at its right or left end of the screen, then we are going to multiply the x direction speed by negative 1. It means that the direction is going to reverse. If the ball is coming at a speed of 3 pixels, then on colliding at left or right wall, its speed will be minus 3 pixels, that is in the reverse direction. And again, when it hits the wall, then again its speed will be positive 3, that is reverse of minus 3. Hence, this will give a boundary to a ball. Also, the same logic will be applied for the upper and the lower wall. If the ball Y's value is greater than the screen height or less than zero, then we are going to reverse its direction. And then we move the ball by incrementing the position of the ball by X move and Y move respectively. Now, this is the most important part of the game where, which I'm talking about where we are going to determine the position where the ball is going to move after it has bounced the wall. So inside the gaming loop right here, we are going to code this. Right here, we, as I told you that if the ball collides with the X position plus the, the total thickness of the ball, which we have specified using the ball pixel variable, we are going to write an if the ball X position plus the ball pixel because we don't want the ball to go completely outside and then bounce back as if you remember the rectangle tutorial where we have to move the rectangle around the window we 
just made sure there that the rectangle does not move outside the main window. It The complete rectangles remain inside the boundary of the screen which we are using. So right here we are using the very same concept. So that's why we are going to add the pixels for the ball so that the complete ball stays. And as soon as the outer side of the balls collide with any boundary, any side, it can be either left, right, top or bottom, we want the ball to bounce back. So that's why we are also going to add ball pixels into the ball exposition. And we are going to check if it is greater than or equal to the width or ball x is less than or equal to zero. So what we want after that is that if this condition is true, we want the position of the ball to get changed. And as I told you before that the ball x move variable is going to be used to reverse the position or you can say change the position of the ball after it has collided. So as I told you in the explanation as well, that when the ball collides with any boundary, what we want is that we have to multiply it with negative one so that if its velocity was, let's say three, after collision, it is going to be minus three. Whereas if it was minus three, it is going to be three after it has its collision. So that's why we are going to multiply it with minus one here. Similarly, we are going to do the very same for the y coordinate so we are going to write in if ball y similarly we are also going to add the ball pixels over here so it is going to be ball pixels and this time it is going to be done with the height so it is going to be height or if the ball y position is less than or equal to zero so if it is what we want is that we want the ball y position using the ball y move variable to be multiplied with negative one which means that we also want to change the location of the ball there after that we also have to move the ball so to move the ball what you have to do is that you have to add the ball x move as well as the ball y move to the initial position or you can say the initial velocity or position of the ball so ball x is basically the initial value of the ball where it is present which we have specified right here this is ball x this is ball y that are the initial position of the ball so to change or you can say that to keep the ball moving you have to add the changed thing so to add the change thing as i told you you have to use the ball x move so you're going to add this and you're going to write in ball x move similarly you are going to write in ball y is going to equal to ball y move. So this is going to help us to keep the ball moving. So to explain what we have done here is that we are providing a condition that if the ball x position is greater than the width of the screen that is here, that is if it is greater than the width of the screen or if the screen or if the then the width of the screen or if it is less than zero that is if the ball is colliding or coming at its right or left end of the screen then we are going to multiply the x direction speed by negative one which we which you can see right over here it means that the direction is basically reversed if the ball is coming at a speed of three pixels then it is going to be minus three that is in the reverse direction and again if it hits the ball if it is minus three it is going to get positive three that will give a boundary to a ball also the same logic goes for this y coordinates that is if the ball y value is greater than the screen height or if it is less than zero that is check right over here then we want its direction to be reversed and also since we want to move the ball so that's why we have to increment the position of the ball by x move and y move respectively which we are doing right over here now the final step is that we will be drawing the ball in the y loop so that it will be displayed in each loop so we are going to draw the circle at the ball x and ball y position so that we so that we can see the ball x and y position which are incrementing in each loop and the ball will be drawn at next position in each loop and hence the ball will move inside the screen and at the end we are going to update the screen. So right down here inside the gaming loop we are going to draw the ball. So it is going to be ball image is going to equal to as I told you that it is going to be a simple circle so we are going to use the dot draw dot circle method which we have covered in the previous tutorial 
So where we were actually, I guess, covering the drawing of primitive shapes in Pygame. So we are going to use that concept right over here and we are going to draw a circle. The circle is going to get added to the main window. We are going to specify the color for the ball that is going to be 00255. After that, we are going to convert the position of the ball to an integer value that is ball x and the ball y position. And after that, we are finally going to determine this 15 over here. And finally, we are going to just update our main window. So I hope that this is clear. This is how actually we are going to add a boundary to an object in Pygame. So let's just run this code and let's just hope that it runs and then I'm going to re-explain what we have coded in this tutorial. So let's just make it a bit more readable and I guess we don't have to add any space anywhere. I don't think so. All right, everything is in order. Let's just run this code. All right, you can see that you can see the ball that is moving around the window. It is bouncing along the, along the actually any boundary it is not moving outside the boundary you can see that after collision what it do is that it changes its velocity so this was exactly what we were going to do now what you can do to reduce its speed because it is moving at a very great speed what you can do is that you can just go on and change these variables because this is basically something that is changing the position so to slow the ball down, what you can do is that you can make this equal to 0 0.5 and this one equal to 0 0.5 as well. So that the multiplication, multiplication basically generates a smaller number so that the incrementing is done in a smaller number. So that's why the ball is going to move slow. And as you can see that now it is moving very, very calmly as I am speaking. All right, as you can see that it strikes the bottom, it strikes the right, bottom, left, top right side and as you can see that the ball is in simple words not moving outside the window now in the previous tutorial where we coded the rectangle part we were actually controlling the rectangle ourselves now in gaming there are basically two concepts one concept is that you have to control the object yourself but in the other one you don't have to control the movement of the object the object is going to move freely around the window for example, if you just consider the pinball game, then I know that you hit the ball with that two bats you have got at the bottom, but that does not mean that the ball is moving according to your choice. It just go, it bounces into objects, it just changes its position, and it is not going according to you. You just go on and hit the ball. It is going to then move wherever it wants to, depending on what object it is going to collide with. Similarly, if you talk about, let's just say that the game where you have to flow, you where you have to save yourself from the meteorites, where I'm talking about the chicken invader game, then you can see that in the chicken invader game also that the chickens are coming, meteorites are coming, and all of these positions are actually predefined. You can only go on and control your plane, but you cannot control those meteorites. So that is where the concept of rectangle and ball both comes into account rectangle concepts come into account when you are controlling your plane and the ball concept comes into account where your enemies are coming that are the chickens and the meteorites or the eggs they are laying so i hope that you have understood what we have covered in this tutorial so let me just give you a quick recap of what we have done in this tutorial now to start on what we have done here is that we have actually created a simple window we have specified a set of colors we have got this as boundaries to objects I guess it is spelled right. I just leave it doesn't matter. All right. So the, what you have done here is that you have specified the ball initial values that are going to be at the center of the window. If you just run this code, you can see that the ball starts from the center and not exactly the center because we have subtracted this 12 from here. Now this you might be thinking that what is the purpose of this? There is no purpose of this. You can just go on and delete it. Wherever you want the ball to start, it is you can just go on and specify that position and the ball is going to start moving from there. After that, these two are basically used to increment the new positions for the ball. And this is the area where you can just go on and control the speed of the ball as you have seen in this tutorial as well. At first it was 3 and after that we have changed it to 0 0.5 because the ball was moving very, very fast. 
This is then the length of the ball, that is the thickness of the ball. This is our gaming loop then. After the gaming loop comes the main part where we are actually coding our game. That is if the ball x position is less than or equal to the width or if it is less than or equal to zero, then what we want is that we want the ball direction to reverse and similarly we want to do it the very same with the ball y position and we are also adding the ball pixels as you can see that the ball is not moving outside the window and this concept we have already covered when we were coding the rectangle example and we were moving the rectangle around with the arrow keys the rectangle was not just moving outside the window because we have added the condition for that and here we are also adding the condition for that by adding the ball pixels to the ball x position then after you have reversed the direction and after the ball has changed its position you also want the ball x position to get changed because this is what is going to draw the ball at a certain location as you can see that we are drawing the circle using this ball x and ball y but in the gaming loop since the ball is going to continuously move so that's why we have to do all of this part in a loop and we are going to increment these values also in a loop because the ball is continuously going to change its position it is continuously going to just go on and strike the corners of the window or you can say the boundaries so we want this thing to be continuous and in a loop so we are incrementing ball x plus equal to the ball x move x move is the basically new increment or you can say change in the direction and ball y move is also increment or change in the direction of the ball that is if it has collided with a boundary and we want to change its velocity that is in the reverse direction and finally we are going to draw the ball image that is going to be drawn using the simple primitive function of dot draw dot circle is going to get added to the window this is going to be the color and this is basically going to be end ball x end ball y that are the positions where the ball is continuously going to be drawn and as you can see here that you do not see any kind of shift and you do not see the ball just disappearing and appearing disappearing appearing because all this is going on so quickly that you cannot notice that the ball is basically deleted and then redrawn new positions are assigned and after the ball is deleted and then redrawn you cannot see it because all that is going on so quickly that you cannot just have a look at it at how this is going on so i hope that you have understood the concept of this so i guess that is it with this tutorial thank you so much guys for watching and i will see you guys in the later tutorials hey guys what's up i welcome you to another tutorial on this section where we are covering the pi game module in python and in this tutorial we are going to start a very interesting example in which we are going to make snow particle display using pi game in python now not everybody must have witnessed snow particles personally but wait a minute what if you can see that snow particles right here on your window by just a few lines of creativity and programming using pi game here is exactly what we are going to do and what we are about to start we are going to have snow particles right here on our window using a few lines of programming using pi game now there are certain steps involved for doing that so the first step is basically going to be import the module that is basically pi game so the first thing as you know that we have to do is to import pi game now along with the pi game we will also need the random module so python has a built-in module that you can use to make random numbers just by importing the random module now you must be thinking that what is the purpose of the random module in this code now the reason we are using this random module is because we have to assign random position to the snow particles that are going to fall in the window because they are not going to be assigned fixed positions they are going to be assigned a random position so that every snow particle that comes after a snow particle is not at that very same place we are going to assign let's say for example we are creating 100 snow particles at a time so at a time 100 snow particles are going to appear on your window and every time that changes for example the first 100 just go down the next 100 starts coming so they are going to be at a different location the reason we are using the random module so random module is basically going to assign random position to the snow particles on the screen after that what we have to do is that we have to initialize the game engine it simply means that you have to choose the colors you want to use in programming world whatever you can think you can make so by the end of this tutorial what you will be finding is that you will find 
black snow particles on the white background. That seems, I guess, a bit opposite. It should be, I guess, white snow particles at a black background. All right, so what we will do is that we are going to initialize our game engine. And after that, what we will do is it should not be within this, outside this. So what we will do here is that we are going to write the chosen colors that will be used to display the output that are going to be white and black. White is going to be the color for the snow particles and black is going to be the color for the background. So here we are going to initialize white. And white is going to be 255, 255, 255. And then we are going to, going to also assign the color for black. Now for black, it is going to be 0, 0 and 0. So these are the two colors which we have initialized. The next thing we are going to do is that we are going to specify the size of the window. Now it can be a number of sizes depending upon the resolution of your system. So what we will do here is that we are going to assign a size variable that is going to be 400 by 400. Now you can just go on and have the display of your own size that totally depends on you which size you want to use for the snow display. After that we are going to write in window equal to pygame dot display dot set mode and that is I guess something not new so I don't need to get into the explanation of this and it is going to be set according to the size that is going to create a window of 400 by 400 for you. The next thing we are going to do over here is that we are going to assign a name to our snow particles window. So the name given can be seen on the left corner of the output window and that is going to be done using pygame.display.setCaption and the caption is going to be snow particles display. All right, so it resembles what we are doing. After that, what we are going to do is that we are going to create an empty array of your snow particles. So we are going to write in a variable here that is going to be an array actually. So it is going to equal to snow particles equal to an empty array. Now what we will do is that we are going to uh, actually locate or you can say assign the snow particles into this array and how it is going to be used you are going to just come to know in a short while. The next thing we are going to do is that we are going to loop to get the snow particles position. So we are going to make a loop and run it to as that many times and add a snow particle in a random XY position using the random module. Now the range for the for loop which we are about to create depends on the number of snow particles you want to create. At the beginning I told you that for example if you want to create 100 snow particles and add a specific time if you take a screenshot of your snow particles display and you count the snow particles they are going to be 100. So all the snow particles basically the number of the snow particles that are going to appear on the screen at a single time depends on this for loop range. So you are going to write in for i in range and whatever you specify here that is going to be basically the number of snow particles on the screen. So let's just say for instance, I just specify 500 here. After that, what we are going to do, as I told you, that we are going to make a loop and run it 100 times and add a snow particle in a random XY position using the random module. So what I will do is that since the resolution of my screen is 400 by 400, so I'm going to assign every snow particle a random position that is going to be from 0 to 400 for the X coordinate and from 0 to 400 for the y coordinate that is basically the size of the window. So right here I'm going to write in x equal to random dot random range. Here it is random range and it is going to be from 0 to 400. So this is going to set the x coordinate for a single particle in the first loop. After that I'm going to also specify the same thing for y. So it is going to be random range and it is again going to be for, from 0 to 400. Now actually here you can just see that this 400 is basically the size of your main window which you have specified here and you have created your window using that. So right here let's just say that for the first time the, the value for i is going to be let's say 0 
So it is going to start from zero. So at the first, this means that the zeroth particle or you can say that the first particle of snow is going to be at this position. Now what is going to be this position? It is going to be a random x, y coordinate. The value of x is going to be from zero to 400. It is going to be a random value. Then the value of y is also going to be a random value. Now there may be particles that may overlap each other. For example, if you are creating, let's say a 2000 particles. So for a 400 by 400 window, that's a lot of snow particles. So there may be particles that may be overlapping each other. The reason behind this is that random range can show numbers that are going to be same because when you are from zero to 400 and you create a number greater than 400, then for sure there are going to be particles that are going to overlap each other. So after you have created the snow particles, you have assigned them the x, y coordinates. Basically, we have not created the snow particles yet. What we have done here is that we have only assigned the x, y coordinates for them. So after assigning the x, y coordinate for them, what you need to do is that you need to append the snow particles to this array you have created at the top. So we are going to write in snow particles dot append and we are going to append it at the x, y location that is going to be a random number or you can say a random x, y position. After that, what we also need to do is that we need to keep track of the time. So what you are going to do is that you can just use the pygame.time.clock for that. So we are going to just move out of this loop and outside this loop, we are going to write in clock equal to pygame.time.clock. All right, so that is going to help us keep or you can say create an object to help track time. After that, in the next step, what we are going to do is that we are going to set the criteria for the snow particles occurrence. Now snow particles should occur until the user presses the close button and for this inside the void loop, we are going to use a for loop. So what you are going to do is that you are going to create the gaming loop here. So before the gaming loop, I'm going to write in done equal to false while not done that is my gaming loop you know the methods for creating your gaming loop so you don't need to worry about this now right inside this we are going to create the for loop so we are going to write in for event in pi game dot event dot get and this is not something new for you you have covered this in the previous tutorials if event dot type equal equal to by game dot quit then what you're going to do is that we are going to use a flag that we have used that we are done with it so we are going to make done equal to true and that is going to do our job after that what we are going to do is that we are going to fill the color for the window so we are going to write in window dot fill and we are going to fill it with black color so it is going to have a window of 400 by 400 having 100 snow particles in white color with a back a black background for now we have not actually made the snow particles we are about to make them so for for now what we have done is that we have actually filled our window with black color so finally comes the time when we have to process our snow particles now to process our snow particles, we are going to use a for loop to process each snow particle in the list. So we are going to write in for i in range the length of snow particles that basically depends on the for loop we have created above that is this for loop. So it is going to be for 100 particles. So right here we are going to process 100 particles because we have appended it to this snow particles area there. So that's why when you want to process it, you can just go on and see the length of this snow particles or you can just go on and directly write 100 over here because we know the length of this array. So to be more specific, you can just write in length equal length of the snow particles because that is a more programming approach. After that, we are going to draw the snow particles. So snow particles is basically going to be a very, very, very tiny circle that is going to be of white color. So we are going to use the primitive drawing methods from Pygame and we are going to write in pygame.draw.circle 
that is going to get added to the window that is 400 by 400 the color for that is going to be white and we are going to write in snow particles ith location and the thickness for the snow particles is going to be 2 so what we have done here is that we have actually drawn a circle in the window of white color and it is going to be the snow particle i which means that the snow particle at ith location for the first iteration since this length is going to be 100 so for the first iteration the value of i is going to be 0 which means the 0th particle so the 0th particle is going to be created the location for that is going to be specified using this for loop so it is going to be at the specified location the random location that is of white color it is going to get added to the window and the thickness for the snow particles is going to be 2 so it is going to do it to every every single particle since this is a for loop after that what you are going to do is that you also want the snow particles to start from the top and just go down so to add the movement into it what you are going to do is that you are going to move the snow particles down from the top one pixel at a time so since we have actually got the location for the xy coordinates so what we will do is that when we want to move it one pixel down we are going to move it one uh, we are going to actually increment one in its actual position so to move the snow particles down one pixel we are going to write in snow particles the ith snow particle for example let's say we are talking about the first snow particle so it is going to be the snow particle number one one so it is going to be for i equal to zero let's say it is going to be the zeroth one so the snow particle at the zeroth one location what it is going to do is that it is going to increment its value by one which means that it is going to go one pixel down now if the snow particles has moved off the bottom of the window then for that we need to actually provide a check so we are going to write in if snow particles zero one i since we are talking about the first one is greater than 400 then what we are going to do is that we are going to reset it just above the top so for that we are going to write in y equal to random dot random range minus 50 minus 10 after that what we are going to do is that we are going to write in snow particles i1 equal to y and we are also going to give it a new x position so to give it a new x position we are going to write an x equal to random dot random range and it is going to be again a position from 0 to 400 and we are going to write in snow particles i 0 is going to equal to x so what we are going to do is that we are going to just go ahead and update the window with that what we have drawn so to do that what we are going to write and we are going to just move out here and we are going to write in pygame game dot display dot flip and after that we are going to write in cl clock dot tick and we are going to provide the frame per second here according to which the clock is going to tick and finally you can just write in pygame dot quit and that is going to do your job so let me just run this code and then i'm going to re-explain with the help of the code that what we have done so let's just run this code and yes we have got a wonderful display of snow particles so if i just stop it at any instant and you just go on and count these which i'm sure you are not going to count these are going to be 100 particles right here on the screen at a single time so if i just let it go stop it again again it is going to be a set or list of the 100 snow particles since the array we have created for the snow particles contain 100 elements that are going to be assigned at random locations of this 400 by 400 window so let's just increase the number of snow particles right from here all you need to do is that you have to just go on and change this number just make it equal to 200 run this code and you are going to see that the number has considerably increased whereas if you want to let's say have it 
to a very great extent just write in 500 and you can see that you have got a lot of particles that are going to be 500 in number and if you just stop it you can see that some of the particles are overlapped with each other as well for example if you just look at this particle that is going move moving down constantly this particle is basically overlapping so let me just show you what we have done so far so the first thing we have done is that we have actually set it our window let's just start from the top all right, so these are the modules. Then we have got pygame.initialization of the pygame module. We have got two colors. We have got the size of the window. We have got the caption. The main thing we have done basically starts from this area. Where the first thing we have did is that we have created an array that is going to actually store your snow particles. After, after creating that array, you also need to append the snow particles to it. So for that, you have created an array that sorry you have created a for loop that is going to start from i and it is going to move till 100 and what you are going to do here is that you are going to assign x and y location to these 100 particles from the pi game window you have created that is 400 by 400 window and you are going to append them to this snow particles array you have created then you have got to keep uh, track of the time as well so for that you have use pygame.time.clock then comes the gaming loop you don't need to I think I don't need to explain that then we have got a black window the main things come in this for loop right over here where the first thing we have did is that we have actually taken into account the length of the snow particles array that is going to be 100 in our case so for that what we will do is that we are going to use that array which basically contains 100 particles at random locations of x and y so for the first one we are going to take the first particle we are going to add it to the window with a white color thickness of 2 and you can see that you have got snow particles i1 plus 1 equal to 1 which means that you want to move it as well one pixel down at a time so since the snow particles if you can see right here where is my window here it is so as you can see that the snow particles are moving straight in the downward direction which means that the snow particles are moving in the y direction they are not moving in the x direction so to increment their location what you have to do here is that you have to increment the y coordinate so to increment the y coordinate you have you can see that i have written snow particles i1 plus equal to 1 it is going to increment the snow particle location one at a time then we can just check if it has moved outside the window since for example if you can see that this particles move down so we also want that particle to appear at the top here so to do that what you will do is that you are going to write in if snow particles i1 is greater than 400 then we will assign the y coordinate and x coordinate new values y is going to equal to random dot random range minus 50 minus 10 that is going to be the location where we want to assign a random value to the new particle you can just go on and change these values and the particle is going to appear at that random location of y coordinate only because the x coordinate as you can see down here is going to be the very same that is going to be from 0 to 400 then you have got snow particle i0 equal to x and that is it i guess that is the part where you got the display this is the frame per second assigning and finally you've got pygame.quit so this was just a very simple code where just in a few lines of pygame you have used the pygame module to create a wonderful a wonderful snow display and yes you've got white snow particles on the black screen so i hope that you have understood how to create a display using game to create a snow particles display so i guess that is it with this tutorial thank you so much guys for watching and i will see you guys in the next tutorial hey guys what's up i welcome you to another tutorial on this section where we are covering the pi game module in python and in this tutorial we are going to start creating a bubble sort visualizer using pi game so in this tutorial we will see how we can visualize the bubble sort algorithm using pygame. That is when the application gets started we can see the unsorted bars with different heights and when we click the space bar key it starts getting arranging in bubble sort manner. That is after every iteration maximum value element should come at last. 
So bubble sort is basically a simple algorithm which is used to sort a given set of n elements provided in form of an array with n number of elements. Bubble sort compares all the elements one by one and sort them based on their values. So to simplify what we are going to do in this tutorial is that we are going to create different bars and then we are going to sort out these bars in the ascending or descending order. So the implementation steps involve to create a main window, then we are going to fill the main window with some color, then we are going to create a method to show the list of bar with specific gaps in between them. After that we are going to get the keys input from the user that is going to be a space bar. So if a space bar is pressed we are going to start the sorting process. We are going to implement bubble sort algorithm on the list and add in the last step after every internal iteration we are going to fill the screen with the background color and call the show method to show the iterated list in the form of a bar. So let's just get started with the starting. So the first thing we have to do is that we have to import pygame and we have to initialize that as well. So we are going to write in pygame.initialize. So that is with the initializing part. After that we are going to set the window size. So we are going to write in window equal to pygame.display dot set mode and we are going to create a display of 500 by 400 that is going to be the height and width of the window after that we are also going to set the name for the window so we are going to write in pygame dot display dot set caption and the caption as suggested in the tutorial name is going to be a bubble sort visualizer all right so after that what we are going to do is that we are going to define the initial positions and we are also going to define the width of each bar because the width of each bar is going to remain the very same the height of the bar is going to be different and that is exactly what we are going to sort the bars according to so height is basically going to be the factor according to which the bubble sort algorithm is going to be applied on this bars so the width is going to remain the very same as I told. So let's just define the initial positions. So it is going to be x equal to 40, y equal to 40. That is going to be the initial position. Then we are going to define the width. So the width for each bar is going to equal to 20. So let's just add a space between these as well. All right. So after specifying the width, we are going to create an array in which we are going to store the height of each bar. And that is exactly going to be the data that has to be sorted. So we are going to write in height equal to let's just say that the height of the bars is going to be 200 then it is going to be 50 then it is going to be 130 then it is going to be 90 then it is going to be 230 after that we can just write in 62 then we can write in 112 88 33 let's just say 83 then we can just write in 70, then we can just write in 158, then we can just write in 181, and finally we can just write in 20. So if you count them, they are basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 in number. So these are basically going to be the 14 bars, and this is going to be the respective height of each bar and the width for each bar is going to remain the very same. So what this bar is basically going to be, it is going to be a simple rectangle with these as the heights of the rectangles and this as the width of the rectangle. So after that what we are going to do is that we are going to define the variable that is going to be for the gaming or the infinite loop we are going to run that is going to be run equal to 2 and after that we are going to create the method to show the list of heights. So that is going to be a method named as show and it is going to show the height show the actually list of heights based on the height of each bar. So in here the first thing we are going to do is that we are going to create a loop to iterate each list or each item of the list. So we are going to write in for i in range and to copy what is basically the length you can just write in 14 or you can simply to be the best programming approach you can just write in length 
and you can just write in the name of the array for which you want to get the height so which for which you want to get the length or the number of elements so height is that array in which we have got the heights so that is why we are going to use its length as the number or you can say the number of iterations for this loop after that we are going to draw each bar with respective gaps in between them so it is going to be the primitive drawing method for rectangles so it is going to be pi game dot draw dot rectangle and in the rectangle we are going to perform certain arguments the first argument is going to be the window to which this these rectangles are going to get added after that we are going to specify the color so let's just say these are going to be white bars so for the white bar i guess the color is going to be zero 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 or i guess two five five two five five two five five not sure so let's just leave it here all right it is going to be zero 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 and after that we are going to specify the location for each bar so it is going to be x that was basically the initial position we have specified over here that is going to be 40 so which means that the first bar is going to be at position number 40 and the next bar after that is going to be at x plus 30 which means that 30 is going to be the gap in between each bar but we also want to have some more twist added to it that is going to be steric y that is going to be the x position and for the y position it is going to be y then we are going to specify the width and we are going to specify the height for the bar as well so height is basically going to be i height for i which means that it is going to take one element at a time and draw one rectangle at a time with this gap at the x coordinates for the y coordinate we do not want any kind of things we want every bar to start at a specific y location which you are going to see the bars are going to be hanging from the top so that's why the y coordinates does not need to change it is going to be the same whereas the x coordinate is going to be something that is going to be different that is going to actually distinguish that which bar is ending when and when the new bar is starting so it is going to be x plus 30 which we have specified here and steric i is going to be the i element so it is going to be zero sorry one in the first iteration and so on 14 till the last iteration since we have 14 elements over here y40 means every bar is going to be at y40 all right after that what we are going to do is that we are going to create our gaming loop so right outside this we are going to create our gaming loop so that is going to be while run which means that while true we are going to create or uh, we are going to create a flag actually that is going to start the sorting so it is going to be a flag that is going to be named as execute and for the initial value it is going to be false the reason we are making it false is that we want when the spacebar key is pressed after that we are going to make this execute equal to true and after that the sorting is going to begin because when we run our code we don't we do not want the sorting to just start on what we want is that we want to have control in our hands which means that when we click the space bar key whenever it is we want the sorting to start then we do not want this the sorting to start automatically when the code is run so that's why we are going to have a flag for that so that the code does not just execute by itself all right so after that we are going to create a time delay as well so for that we are going to write in pygame dot time dot delay so that is going to be a delay of 10 millisecond after that we are going to create the variable keys that is going to actually detect the key that has been pressed which in our case is going to be the space key so keys is basically going to equal to pi game dot key dot get pressed so it is going to detect a key pressed so the key that is going to be pressed is going to be space bar as i told you earlier the next thing we are going to do over here is that we are going to create the iterating events so that is going to be very simple which you have been covering in almost every tutorial so it is going to be for event in pygame dot event dot get what we want is that if the event is too quick which means that if event dot type equal equal to pygame dot quit then what we want is that we want the game loop to just end so for that what we will simply do is that we are going to make run equal to false so right here we are going to write in run equal to 
false. So this is not something new. So let's just get out of it. All right, after that, what we are going to do is that we are going to detect if a space bar key is pressed or not, because this key press is only going to detect if a key has been pressed or not. Now, what key is pressed and what key we want to detect, actually, we are going to do it right here. So it is since, as I told you earlier, that this basically contains an array of every key that you press after the code has run. So to check in that array, we are going to write in for if keys, contains pygame dot k underscore space which means the space key then that is exactly when we want to make execute equal to true here so as i told you before that we have this flag right over here because we do not want the code to run automatically when the code is run we want to have control in our hands that is when we want to make or to start the bubble sort visualization that is when you want to when you press the key space that is exactly when we want to start the bubble sort visualization so that's why we have got the array of every key press so you can just go on and click let's say you can just click on h you can click on m you can click on v and you can click on the space bar key so this array is going to contain all those four keys after the code has run so it is going to contain all those four keys so we are going to check whatever keys has been pressed does it contain the key space or not if it does it is going to make execute equal to true after that we are also going to check if a key space has been pressed or not so it is basically the checking if execute flag is false or not so if the key space has not been pressed so the execute is going to be false in that case so we are, we are going to write in f execute equal equal to false then what we are going to do is that we are going to write in window dot fill and we are going to fill it with i guess this is white color 255 255 and 255 and this is not going to be triple equal to it is going to be double equal to all right so at the last thing we need to do over here is that you need to show the heights so you are going to call the show method from here and pass in the height for the variables and finally we are going to update our window as well so we are going to write in pygame dot display dot update now after that we are going to check if the execute flag is true or not so for that we are going to have our else condition so right here we are going to define the else condition all right sorry this was to be inside this if condition we just yeah all right this has to be inside this because when the execute is false which means that the key space has not been pressed we want the main window background to be a blank color we want to call in the heights we want to update the display after that right here we are going to write in the else condition so in the else condition we are going to check if the execute flag is true because if execute equal equal to false it is going to execute this else for sure there are going to be two values for the booleans it is going to be either true or false which means in the else we are going to write the code when the execute flag is going to be true so when the execute flag is true we want to start sorting using bubble sort technique so we are going to write in for i in range we are going to take in account the length of the array of heights and we are going to subtract one from it after that we what we are going to do is because the reason we are subtracting one over here is that for example you have 14 bars so you want 13 steps to sort 14 elements because when the last two elements are arranged the la the biggest element is automatically going to be at the leftmost or the rightmost side so you don't need to have a separate for loop for that so that is exactly the reason you are going to have minus one right over here so after this the iteration maximum element will come at last so we are going to write in for j in range length of the height minus i minus 1. Now the reason we are subtracting i in here in the inner loop is that because when the first element has been sorted out when this was when i is equal to 1 we want 1 to be subtracted after 2 we want 2 to be subtracted because when one element has been sorted out we do not want 
the sort algorithm to get performed on that again because that is actually called the memory consumption or you can say just say that you are using the processor for extra amount of time or you are just wasting the resources for your processor now this is a very small code the processor things does not matter over here but what if you are creating a very 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 big game so there you have to take into account such small things so that's why you have to subtract this i from here because when one element has been sorted out you want the iteration to perform on one less element then all right so that's why in the inner loop you are also going to subtract one as well as i after that we are going to specify the if condition over here in which starting is greater than the next element so if height so if the height for the jth element is greater than the height for j plus 1 that is when the starting is greater than the next element then we are going to save it to a temporary variable and swap them using the temporary variable so we are going to create a temporary variable temp over here and we are going to write in height j with that i guess you might have gone with the swapping process that is a very 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 basic python concept that is to store one in the temporary variable assign j plus one to j and after that what you can do is that you can just take on the value from the temporary variable and store it in j plus one so here we are going to write in height j which we have already stored in the temporary variable so you can just overwrite the value for height j now we are going to make it equal to j plus one that is actually the swapping process and finally what you can do is that you can just write in height j plus 1 is going to get equal to 2 which means that it is going to take in the value from the temporary variable after that what you're going to do is that you sorry it is not going to be t it is going to be the temp the temporary variable we have created after that what we are going to do is that we are going to just click enter right in here after this we are going to write in window dot fill and the window dot fill color is right here that is 255 255 255 just paste it over here and after that we are going to call in the show for that so it is going to be show height and we are going to create a game delay timer as well so we are going to write in pi game dot time dot delay that is going to be for 50 millisecond and we are going to write in the update so we are going to write in pi game dot display dot update and finally write outside everything you can just write in pygame dot quit and that is going to do your job so let's just run this code and then through the output we are going to revise what we have done all right so here you can see that you have got a wise screen at which at y40 x40 you have got your first bar and then randomly you have got all your bars according to the array you have used so if you click on space bar the screen blacked out which is exactly what we don't want i guess we have got problems with the colors we've got zero 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 here we have got all right all right all right my bad this should be zero 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 and this should be two five five two five five and two five five now i will tell you the reason behind this let's just run this code and see if it works now just click spacebar and you can see that it works perfectly it has start organizing elements if you can see that you've got the biggest bar over here then the smallest 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 and then the smallest one at the leftmost side all right so let's just run this again and through the output we will try to see what is happening all right so let's just move at the top all right we don't need to explain these uh the first thing you you can see right over here is that at x40 y40 you have got your first bar actually this over here is the position at x40 y40 the width for each bar you can see is same that is 20 then you can see the heights so if i just rerun this code then basically these are the heights which are going to be accordingly the first one the first bar is basically 200 then we have got the 50 bar we have got the 130 the 90 bar 230 62 112 88 
then we have got the 70 158 181 and finally we have got this uh, this 20th bar all right so these are the heights of the bar the width is the very same then we have got run equal to true that is the gaming loop then we have got this method all right uh, just have a look at the color so the background color basically which we are using is going to be this uh, sorry the rectangle color is going to be this so if you have a look here this is white color which is going to be used for the rectangles now you can see that you have got a specific space between each bar as well you can see that you have got a predefined and equal space between each bar now that is done using this logic right over here this is going to be that the rectangles are going to be drawn in the window white is going to be the color the position at which they are going to be positioned is basically going to be x plus 30 for the first bar so this position right over here is i guess 40 plus 30 that is going to be 70 then after that plus 30 which means that this is 10 this is sorry 20 that is the width of the bar so this is the position where the first bar is going to start drawing that is 70 that is 40 plus 30 40 was the initial x value 30 was going to be added to it that makes this one 70 over here after that the next bar is going to be drawn at 70 plus 30 so that makes it equal to 100 so this is the 100 position where the 30 gap right over here this basically is 20 that is the width of the bar and after that you have got a 10 space right over here and this is exactly where the next bar is going to start now you can see that the y remains the same because you can see that every bar is positioned at exactly the very same position you want it to be then width and height basically determines the width and height of the bar width remains the same whereas height changes according to the loop for the first iteration it is going to be as you have seen on at the top that the height and width keeps changing which is according to this after that let's just move on to the gaming loop or let's just make this method show also be popping up all right so after that the next thing we are doing is basically is that we have already defined run equal to true so while run we have defined a variable execute equal to false that is to just have control in our hands so that when we click on the space key things are going to get sorted after that after that we have got a delay timer for 10 seconds we have got keys equal to pi game dot key dot get press that is going to be an array of every key that is going to be pressed for example if i now just click on any key you can see that i'm clicking on keys but the sorting is not being done because for now i've not clicked the space bar key all right so it is going to be the array of elements after that we have got the gaming loop that is going to quit if you click on this cross key then we are going to check from the array that if key spy game dot key space is a part of it then it is going to make execute equal to true so if the execute is equal equal to false then the windows dot fill is going to be zero 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 which means that it is going to be in black color now for the previous case we have made it two five five two five five two five five and that was exactly the reason that everything was blacked out on the screen because the 255255255 was the rectangle for the the color for the rectangles as well as it was for the window so that's why everything was blacked out now we have changed the colors accordingly we have made the rectangles white and the background screen to be black and after that it is going to call the show method so when execute is false it is going to call the show methods and in the show method it is going to draw the rectangles all in white color right here on the screen so it is going to fill the background with black color as you can see and it is going to draw the rectangles by calling this show method if execute equal to false which means that why for now we have not clicked on the space bar key which i have not so let's just move down and it is also calling pygame.display.update because we want to update the screen as well now let's just move on to the else condition and in the else condition that is where basically our execute is going to be true so for with the execute to be true what we want is that we want the sorting to just begin so for i in range length height minus one so since we have got 14 elements over here so 13 sortings have to be provided so for the first sorting the biggest element is going to move here after that so in the last sort the last element is automatically that is the smallest element is automatically going to be at the leftmost side so you don't need to perform an iteration for that so that's why we have got this minus one over here whereas in the inner loop we have got for j in range length height minus i minus one we want to limit the number of iterations to the max so so to the minimum sorry the reason behind is that we want the processor capability or the processor usage to be at the minimum 
So that's why we are going to minimize one because when the biggest element has been sorted out here and in the next iteration, we don't want the inner loop to execute the very same number of times it has executed for the first because since one element has been sorted out, so that's why we don't need to perform the sorting on that. So that's why we are going to leave it at its position and perform the sorting on the other remaining elements. And similarly, one has to be also subtracted from here because this last element is automatically going to be at its original position. Then we are going to perform the swapping process. That is if height of j is greater than height of j plus one, that is it is going to compare for example, for the first comparison, it is going to compare this with this right over here and it is going to swap accordingly. So that is where the swapping process occurs. We don't need to get into the explanation of this. Windows.fill 000 show height is going to get called pygame.time.delay pygame.display.update and that's it. Just click on the spacebar key and you can see that the wonderful sorting process just begins. So that is the bubble sort visualizer in Pygame. Now, if you want to sort it in the other order, for example, you can see now that the biggest bar moved at the rightmost position and after that it is going to sort accordingly and the smallest bar is going to be at the leftmost position. So if you want it to do it the opposite way, all you have to do is that you have to just change this sign run this code you can see that you've got the very same bars just click on it and now you can see that the smallest element is at the rightmost position and you can see that it has been sorted and the leftmost element is the element that is the biggest of all so i hope that you have understood how it is done so i guess that is it all you have to do is that you have to change the greater than sign to less than sign over here or i guess the less than sign to greater than sign to do it the other way all right, so I hope that you have understood how to perform the bubble sort visualization in Python. We have done it right here. It was a very simple code, not that much tricky, I guess. The part that was important was actually this gaming loop over here in which we have got these, I guess, 10 to 15 lines that were um, the main part of the code. So that is it with this tutorial. Thank you so much, guys, for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Hey guys, what's up? I welcome you to another tutorial on this section where we are covering the Pygame module in Python. And in this tutorial, finally, we are going to be making a game. So before that, we have made uh, certain things like we have made the snowfall display, then we have done the tic-tac-toe game. Now in this tutorial, we are going to sum up everything we have covered so far and we are going to create a very, very, very beautiful looking game. So in this, basically what we are going to do is that we are going to create three windows basically. In the first window, it is going to be only a set of buttons that is going to ask you to start the game, exit the game, and it is going to ask you to open the options tab. And in the second window, what we are going to do is that that is going to be the playing window where we are going to play our game. And the third window is basically going to be the window where game over button is going to pop up. So to explain what I'm talking about, this is basically going to be the first window we are going to cover. It is going to have this title. You can have any title you want. Then it is going to have three buttons, the start button, the options button, and the exit button. When you click on the start button, the game is going to start. And we are going to see if we add some options or not, doesn't matter. Then the third one is to exit the game. If you click on this button, or if you click on this cross button, it is going to just go on and exit the gaming loop for you. Then in the second window, that is basically the playing window. It is basically a window that is going to be moving. So for now, since this is a picture, so that's why it is not moving. But these objects are basically the enemy objects that are going to be moving from this direction. That is the right direction for me. And it is going to move towards the left direction. And this is basically you that is going to play the game. So as you can see that you have got this blue rectangle over here and you have got a blue rectangle and a rect re rectangle over here. So basically the concept behind the game is that if you go on and touch this red rectangle with this blue rectangle of yours, the game is going to be over. Then if you miss any of the blue rectangle, the game is also going to be over. But if you go on and keep just touching this blue but blue rectangle, then it is going to keep adding this score for you, which is right down here. So basically the game over condition is going to be for two things. The first that if you collide with a red rectangle and the second is that if you miss any of the blue rectangle. So that is basically going to be the concept behind the game. And this is basically the rectangle you are going to be controlling using the 
arrow keys. These are the objects that are going to move automatically from this side to this side and this is basically what you are going to be controlling. So just consider it as the aeroplane you are going to move. These are the bonuses and these are the enemies. So this is what is uh, basically the concept of the game. Then in the third window as I talked to you about, it is going to be the game over window which is going to have an exit button which on you if you click on it the game is going to just exit or if it is going to have the restart button that, that if you click on the restart button it is going to again open this window for you and the game is going to restart from the very beginning where the score is going to be zero you are going to get the enemies the bonus point type of things now one more thing over here also is that basically these rectangles which you are which are going to be created are going to be at random directions in the window for example the first rectangle pops from here the second may pop up from here and the next thing is that they are going to have a defined speed at the starting and the speed is automatically going to keep increasing as you might have noticed in many games that when there are enemies coming and you have to just dodge the enemies and just collect the bonuses the speed of the objects keep on increases as your score increases. So we are also going to do that. So I hope you have got the concept of the game. So let's just get on to the compiler and let's just start our coding part. So the first thing we are going to do is that we are going to import the modules that are required for it. So we are going to be requiring three modules basically. The first one is the Pi game module. Then we are going to use the system module. And finally, we are going to use the random module. Now you know that why we have to use the Pi game and the system module. Now we are using the random module as I told you in the images that basically the objects are going to be at random positions in the window. So that's why we need the random module as well. So let's just import them. So the first one is as I told you is going to be Pi game. That is the most important of all. Then we are going to have the system module. And the third module we are going to use is basically going to be the random module. So these are basically going to be the three modules which we are going to be using. Now the next thing we are going to do is that we are going to initialize our constructor function for the Pi game. So we are going to write in Pi game dot init and that is going to initialize the constructor for Pi game. Then we are going to set the resolution for our main window where we are going to be playing and which is basically going to be the window where the start options exit button and the game over button is also going to be appear. So this is basically going to be a predefined window for all the three windows. S sorry, this is going to be the resolution for all the three windows we are going to be using. Now after that, what we are going to do is that we are going to define three variables R1, R2 and IR3. And basically they are the random assigning of a value to variables that are going to range from lower limit to upper limit and why we are going to use these ranges that is going to be a part of a later talk so you're going to understand it more than so let's just initialize them now using the random module we are going to have only a single equal to sign that is going to be r1 equal to random it is going to take a random integer between a specific range that is going to be from 125 to 255 then we are going to have r2 it is going to have random integer and this time it is going to be from 0 to 255. Then we are going to have R3 that is going to be random dot random integer and it is going to be also from 0 to 255. So we have got basically these three variables R1, R2, R3 that are going to have random values of integers. R1 is going to have a value from 125 to 255. Then we are going to have R2 from 0 to 255. And similarly, R3 is also going to be from 0 to 255. So this is basically the random assigning of a value to variables ranging from lower limit to upper limit. And why we are going to use them, you are going to understand soon. The next thing we are going to do is that we are going to create our main window. So we are going to write in window equal to pi game dot display dot set mode. And we are going to set the mode to the resolution we have specified. Then we are also going to have the clock here. So we are going to write in clock equal to pi game dot time dot clock. After that, what we are going to do is that we are going to have a range of colors. So we are going to have 
three colors red green and blue so we are going to define these three colors so red one is going to be 25500 then we are going to have green and green is going to equal to 0 to 5, 5, 0. and finally we are going to have sorry not red we are going to have blue and that is going to equal to 0 0 and 255 5. so these are basically the three colors we are going to be using now what we are going to do is that we are going to create a list where we are going to store these three colors now the reason we are going to store these three colors is basically going to be the color for the enemies as well as the bonus points so what we are going to do later is that we are going to select random colors for the random enemy objects or enemy rectangles that are going to appear so that's why we are going to create a color list and right from this color list later we are going to be using colors at a random so we are going to choose a random colors from this red green and blue for the enemies object you can have as many colors as you want you can have let's say 10 colors so the enemies that are going to appear for you are also going to be as much as colorful as much as this color list is bigger after that what we are going to do is that we are going to create four variables the first one is going to be game heading r1 and that is going to equal to zero then after that we are going to have game heading r2 and that is also going to equal to zero then we are going to have game heading r3 and that is going to equal to 254 then we are going to have game heading r4 and that is going to equal to 254 as well now why we are going to be using these variables that is also going to be explained later for now you only need to understand the variables that are going to be used in this entire code after that what we are going to do is that we are going to assign a color to our main player that is playing that is basically the color which I have shown you right here so this is the color for the player that is blue so you can have let's say you want to have the red color you can go on and have the red color but I'm going to use the blue color so for the player playing that is the player playing or the object which you are going to be controlling is going to be of blue color so we have already initialized blue so that's why it is going to have this blue colors for the player playing after that we are going to create light shade for menu buttons as well as the start dark shades so for that we are going to initialize two colors the first one is the light shade of menu buttons and the second one is for the dark shade of the menu buttons so we are going to write in the start light shade and for the light shade we are going to be using 169 169 169 and then for the start dark shade we are going to be using 100 100 100 now you can use the colors of your own choice these are basically the colors for the menu buttons that are the start light shade and the start dark shade as the variables in indicate now we are going to have the color for the start button as start area as well so that's why we are going to write in two colors first we are going to initialize white white is basically 255 255 255 and we are going to initialize the start color that is going to be 255 255 255 or you can go on and simply write in white over here after that what we are going to do is that we are going to create two variables that are going to be width and height and in the width we are going to store the width of the window and in the height we are going to store the height of the window so we are going to write in width equal to window dot get width and for the height we are going to write in window dot get height so these are the two variables which we are going to be using width and height in the width we have stored the width and in the height we have stored the height respectively after that what we are going to do is that we are going to initialize the x position of the player that is going to be the initial x position of the player and we are also going to initialize the initial y position of the player that is when the game starts for example if you just have a look at this image this is basically this the time where the game has just started i have not moved this rectangle from its position so this is the initial position where the game actually start 
So right here, what we are doing is that we are going to initialize the initial X and Y position of the player. So for the initial X position, we are going to create a variable initial X and initial X is going to equal to, let's say 40. So 40 is going to be the X coordinate of the, so of the object. And then we are going to have, I guess I've misspelled it. It is going to be initial and it is going to be initial Y and it is going to be height by two. So the height is basically, I guess, 700. Yes, it is 720, sorry. So this over here is going to be 460 in our case. So 40 comma, let's just have it over here. So basically 40 and 460, that makes it the half of, sorry, 360, not 460. I'm not good at math. So these are going to be the coordinates for the initial position of the object which is right here. So basically what I'm saying is that this position over here is basically x40 as you can see that you've got a little distance from the top and 60 from above as you throw sorry 360 from the y coordinate. So this is the initial position that is 40 comma 360 for the x and y coordinate respectively. So let's just remove this. I hope you've got this. After that, what we are going to do is that we are going to define two variables, X and Y. We are going to give them values. We are going to initialize width one and height one. And we are also going to initialize the enemy size. So we are going to define two variables, X equal to 300 and Y equal to 290. Now these are basically the coordinates where the first enemy is going to pop up at x300 y290 the first enemy is going to pop up and then accordingly by using these two variables x and y we are going to alternate or you may say that we are going to change the position of x and y coordinate of the enemies because every time the enemy is not going to pop up from the same position it is going to be a different position every time so that's why we are going to initialize the initial values for the enemy after that we are going to be using these two variables and change the location or you may say the X and Y coordinate for the enemy pop-up location. After that, we are going to just initialize the width and height for the, for the object of the player. So it is going to be, let's say 140. And we are also going to initialize the enemy size. So let's just say that the enemy size is 50. After that, what we are going to do is that we are going to define the font style. As you can see that we have got, actually in the first window, we have got three buttons, the start button, the options button, and, ex and the exit button. And we have also got this heading at the top. So for that, we are going to define a specific style. And we are going to use this font style for every button we, we are going to create. So it is going to be pygame.font.com system font and let's just say that I'm going to be using corbel and 35 is going to be the thickness of the text. After that what we are going to do is that we are going to start text that is going to be rendered on the window. So for that we are going to be creating three variables. The first one is going to be start text then we are going to be creating options text and finally we are going to be creating the exit text. So as you can see right here in the image that we have actually got these three buttons, the start button, the option button, and the exit button. And right over here, that is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to render the start text, the options text, and the exit text on the window. So in the start text, we are going to write in font style, which we have defined to be Corbel 35. We are going to be using that to render the text onto the window. The text that is going to get render is going to be start. We are going to make it true. And we are also going to write in white over here. After that, what we are going to do is that we are going to just copy this from here. We are going to paste it over here. We are going to paste it over here. And we are going to just change this, this one to options and this one to exit. All right, so these are the three buttons which we have actually rendered onto the window. After that, we are also going to render the game title. So for the game title, we are going to create one more variable that is going to be game heading. And game heading is going to equal to 
let's just paste it again and we don't need this equal to sign it is going to be font style dot render and it is going to be game heading this time game heading or you can just call the game by any name so for now we are using game heading over here and then we are going to not use white over here what we are going to use is that we are going to use the ranges we have defined the r3 r2 and r1 now at the top you can see right over here that we have got r1 r2 r3 so r1 r2 r3 are basically a set of colors basically r1 is going to be a value from 1 to 5 to 255 r2 is going to be a value from 0 to 255 and r3 is also going to be a value from 0 to 255 so right over here what it is going to do is that this game heading button is going to take a value from r3 that is going to be a random value from 0 to 255 r2 a random value from 0 to 255 and similarly r1 that is going to be a random value from 1 to 5 to 255 i guess so let's just say that for the first iteration it takes the random value of r3 to be let's just say 255 and let's just say sorry not 255 let's just say it takes the 200 value then again let's just say for r2 it also takes 200 value and let's just say for the r3 it takes this value so whatever color is at this resolution of red green and blue it is going to have the color for game heading accordingly so that's why we have used the r3 r2 r1 so that was just to add a bit of let's just say you can say add a bit of mixture to this heading that is the game main heading after that what we are going to do is that we are going to define two variables that are going to be x1 and y1 and x1 and y1 are going to be a value that is going to be again a random value so let's just write in x1 and x1 sorry not like this it is going to be small x and it is going to be x1 equal to random dot random integer it is going to be a value that is going to be worth by 200 worth is 720 so it is going to be a value from 360 to 720 and after that we are going to define y1 and y1 is going to be a value from random dot random integer from 100 to height by 2 that is 360 because 720 is the height divided by 2 and that makes it equal to 360 so let's just write them right over here so this means that it is going to be a value from 360 to 720 and then this one is going to be a value from 100 to 360 so these are basically going to be the two values for x1 and y1 accordingly so let's just remove this i hope that you have caught it or oh, let's just be present right over here all right after that what we are going to do is that we are going to define x2 and y2 so right here we are going to define x2 and x2 is let's just say equal to 40 and y2 is let's just say equal to 40 so these are basically going to be the locations for the enemy objects so x1 y1 is going to be the location for the enemy and then x2 y2 is going to be the location for the enemy number two so at the time two enemies are going to be pop up in which one is going to be the bonus and one is going to be actually the enemy with which if you collide it is going to be game over for you we can also just go on and set the object speed right over here because since we have initialized the the locations for the objects that's why we need to have the object speed as well so we are going to initialize object speed as let's just say 12 now this object speed is going to change when your score increases at time so for the score we are going to initialize a variable count equal to zero because count is going to be zero at the start then we are going to have a rgb value that is going to be a random choice from the color list so it is going to be random dot choice and it is going to be from the color list now the reason we are choosing it from the color list and it is going to be a random value is because we want to assign these objects which we have assigned at x1 y1 x2 and y2 location a random value from the color list 
So the objects that are going to appear can be green, they can be red, and they can be blue as well. But for the player object, which is basically the playing object, we have decided a step color that is going to be blue in our case. After that, what we are going to do is that we are going to assign enemy positions. So to assign enemy positions, we are going to create EP. It is going to be width. Random dot random integer from 50 to height minus 50. And then E1 position is going to be random dot random integer width width plus 100 and random dot random integer from 50 to height minus 100 so these are going to be the enemy position and finally comes the place where we are going to define functions so the first function we are going to be coding is going to be for the game over so we are not going to code it at the very start after that we are going to have a function for the game that is going to be the function where we are going to create our gaming loop and basically the third function is going to be for the introduction part where we are going to have the introduction for our button and that is going to be I guess it and this is basically going to be the main thing we are going to be doing so I guess let's just stop for now and we are going to start in the next tutorial with the functions part I hope you have understood what we have covered so far there are things which you might have not understood for now but you are going to automatically understand them with time for example if I just talk about the four variables we have used right here at the top we have not used them yet you will come to know about these because we initialize these variables as well at the start I told you that you need not to worry about but I explain them later when we have this line over here basically the R1, R2, R3 were to initialize random color to this game heading so I hope that you have understood it let's just quit for now I guess the tutorial has gone too far let's just start on from the next tutorial we are going to resume it right from here so thank you so much guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial